Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. It is episode 4040 of the Halls of Ardenvool Mega Dungeon by Richard Barton using the old school essential system by Necrotic Gnome. My name is John. I am the referee for the evening and going around the horn we have. Hi, I'm Mike. I play Gorin the Dwarf. Hey, I'm uh, David. I play Onweir the Illusionist. I'm uh, Matt. I play uh, Avaricios, the left hand of Lysion and a fifth level cleric. And I'm Ted. I'm playing Mortus J. Gobliano, a goblin. Nice. All right. We've got another full house two weeks in a row. We you know we're not going to be able to keep that stretch up. Um, <laughs> so it is the 30th of Lagarios. It is about 2.20 p.m. They are in the dungeon, not too far down below. Actually, kind of far below, actually. Um, you've traveled basically 200 feet down a tight corridor and you are currently right above a very narrow four foot wide hole in the floor that is apparently leading down into the howling caves of the well of light um, because you have the feeling that there might be some baboons directly below you and everyone is real quiet all of a sudden um, you you think that your lantern light may have given you away and so you're deciding what to do. You have Yost, Njal, and Lisbeth with you. And uh, can we just get a recap from the spellcasters what their um, spells known are? Sure. I'll go first. I've got it right up here. Um, Avaricios has uh, uh, Cure Light Wounds prepared two times, level one spells. He has uh, Hold Person as level two and Silence as a level two. Nice. And uh, Elizabeth uh, just has one spell. She has uh, fairy fire. Right. And on and on we are has uh, chromatic orb and the Bracteros effect for level one, level one spells and brainful of small spiders and improved phantasmal force for level two. Cool. All right. So let me get my thing up here. Yeah. All right. So uh, you know the situation. You, it's a very narrow corridor, so you all it's a, it's a little bit less than five feet tall where you guys are right now, so the taller amongst you actually have to hunch down. You cannot go side by side, so you have to be careful as you kind of switch positions. And then there is a four-foot wide, rough diameter stone hole that is in the floor in front of you. Lisbeth's lantern light, you know, has broken through that hole. And you have reason to suspect that whatever is waiting for you below that hole very much knows that you are there. So what is your plan? Um, <clears throat> well, I have a couple questions about the hole before uh, Mort goes down it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we can we know our light is going down in there, but I, and we we know that we're smelling some monkey, but we're is there light coming out of the hole? No, it's completely dark. Completely silent. dark in the hole. Yeah. Okay. And does there's like we've seen evidence that someone has traveled through some of these corridors. You know, the scree kind of being moved around. Are we seeing evidence that like the edge of the hole has wear? Uh, uh, anything like that? Yes. So, uh, are you in the front? Um. Yes. I'm. Gorin and I are sort of up front. Yeah. Okay. So, more when you're kind of looking for these things, you're you're being very quiet. Yes. But you can. Um you can see that there is in front of you a uh, a large spike that has been driven into the ground at the very edge of the hole but there doesn't seem to be anything around that spike but it's like a, like a railroad spike uh, size you know like really big um that's been driven in um and does still have a little bit of the head up out of the rock it's sort of like you felt it because you like you're on your we'll say like you're on your chest basically like peering over yeah. sort of thing um and you felt it hit your your chest enough that you could hook a rope or something over it for example quite possibly yes okay david that's that's it that's fine yeah I, oh, okay. I, ha I have an easy one john is it okay if we pull up the the map of where we are up on uh albert yep yeah. yep yep good thinking did you want uh your end of things or the thing or the end where you think you might be going uh, our end of things, okay. like where, where we are right now. I'm just curious about like that, the, the tunnel that we just came down and how we might want to arrange ourselves. Oh, so tiny. Okay. Yeah. I love this map. Yes. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty uh, awesome. Bit of, bit it's of tunnel. Really cool. 
in the distant future, if the campaign should ever come to end, we should make sure not to lose at least a digital copy of these maps because it's very fun. Yes, yeah, as yeah. a sort of artifact. Yeah. Right. Um, so so you Matt, I, you're talking about like how to spread ourselves out down the hallway. Yeah, we might want to like our ability to run away. Yeah, if, if if we need to, and just like who's up front, um, uh, as as part of that, just in case it's uh, handy, I'm going to reach into um, the uh, Laryl's uh, Laryl sack mm -hmm. and pull out yep. a candle, John. Okay, and I'm going to uh, hold it up to um, Lisbeth's uh, lantern that she's holding, mm -hmm. and just uh, like set it down on the ground so that there's like exactly where she is, so that there's kind of a constant source of light. Like even if she were to move back with it, yeah, it wouldn't appear that that light's going to change all that much if people are watching. There would be a dimming, but yes, the light source would be yeah. constant. Yeah. I'll also add, though this isn't functional to the candle idea, but in, in general, don't forget that the Bracteros effect makes up to three light sources invisible to anyone but us. Should have thought of that before we approached this hole. But <laughs> are we good? Are we good? Okay. But we didn't know about the hole. We didn't know. We didn't know. That's true. That's true. But if if generated in any of our ideas as things proceed, light is a concern. That is something I can trigger at any point. So be keep bear that in mind. Yeah. Excellent. If we and are it lasts like three hours, it says one to three hours plus one hour per level. Yeah. I believe, John. So it'll last a long time. Again, yeah. should have cast it earlier. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, here we are. That's what happens. <laughs> um, At least we right, have so you to blame if we all like, hey, oh. I'm here. Okay, so I'm here for that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, now we had an idea, John. We were thinking that, um, you know, seeing this and, you know, seeing Mort and Gorand up there kind of close to the edge, we thought it'd be really good to be able for one of them to, to peek down the, the more quiet of the two. Mm -hmm. um, but we were thinking that it might be a good idea if he weren't visible. So uh, uh, we talked about uh, Yost letting him borrow the, the ring mm -hmm. that yeah. he and Avaricius pair so he could peek over. Yeah. Invisibly. I'm going to give you the ring, Mort. That's very kind of you, Yost. Well, you know, I like you very much and I want you to not be killed by monkeys. <laughs> oh, I had oh, an Yost. idea. You're just the best, Yost. You I have an idea, know. and I only, I'm only thinking about it now that David brought up his Bracteros effect. Go for it, dude. Go for I'm it. not trying to change anything. I'm just saying yeah, there yeah. could light a light source, make it invisible, and go down there invisible with Laryl's cloak. I can also do that. I mean, I can I'm, make a I'm lamp. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not trying to change the whole, the whole, the whole plan. No, you know? that's exactly why I mentioned it. Like, just like viewers, listeners may recall the cursed mm -hmm. black light torch that still oh. has Avaricious withered, you know, claws attached to it. <laughs> we can essentially recreate that in a non-cursed fashion by casting this on a lantern or again multiple light sources. So if we want to do that now, just in preparation, regardless of what we plan. Although I like my Matt, uh, Mike's idea as a additional one. I can do that. Is that something y'all want me to do? I mean, we don't what have to you? reinvent the wheel. I'm just throwing it out there. And, no, and then Why at not? that point, too, maybe even David's not the best person to go down there and do that anyway because he's squishy as hell. So and not that's why Mort was willing to do it. Yeah, I still think Mort right. is, a, is a good scout for this. I don't, I don't want to take his place in it. I'm just saying if in preparation for anything that may happen, for instance, if Mort does get their attention on accident, if you guys want me to cast this on torches or light sources now, now's the time, perhaps. Should I do it? I mean, well, or a way. Or, but we or don't want it. our current light to go out, right? Because we'll then they'll just think that we left. Oh, well, we, we lit that candle. The candle will still exactly. be there. Right. Exactly. And I can choose yeah. not to do it on that. So, uh, okay. Not to waffle that. around too much. Just let's let's right. not worry about it now, then. And let's just go for the regular plan. David, do you want. Okay, um, I'm going to cast the, the Bracteros effect. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Awesome. I think that's um, awesome. I'm going to okay. cast it on just for the sake of having two. We only have one lantern lit, correct? Yep. I'm going to yeah. also bring out my lantern, if no one else has a lantern, and cast it on that so that we have two invisible light lanterns that we can toss between each other as needed if we run or we get split up or anything like that. Is that fair? Yep. Awesome. That makes okay. sense. Done. Uh-oh. There Whoa. we go. Wait. <laughs> I drew David. So, so you're starting another lantern. Is that right? Go ahead, John. What's your uh, concern, John? 
Yeah, so yours, what, what three light switches are you casting the Bracteros, Bracteros effect on? I, I'm assuming I can cast it on only two if that's possible, or I don't know. I, I have the transcribed spell description from our. It says uh, the magic user chooses up to three light sources. Three. You're golden. Up to. Yeah, so I'm going to choose two, and it's going to be the prior lantern that uh, Avaricios was carrying. Elizabeth, 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 was, carrying. That, yeah. Elizabeth yeah. was carrying, and I'm going to get another one. And now, why don't I give it to a different retainer for now? I'll bring mine out of my inventory and give it to y'all. Yost, Yost will hold Yost, it. Yost will hold the other one, and I'm going to cast the spell on both. So both of our, we have two retainers with light sources that are invisible to anyone but us Okay, so within I need you to... a 20-foot space. Right, okay. So, uh, yeah, to be clear, the light source still emanates normally for you guys, so it still emanates um, right. 30 feet, but uh, but other people cannot see you as long as they are outside of 20 feet. It's a little bit. Oh, I see. Okay, um, so it's a little more complicated. Got but, it. Um, I misunderstood. All right. That's good to know. But I need you to take away a flask of oil. Yes. Uh, and then let's see. It makes sense. So if Yost is at the back of the line with a lantern, or if Elizabeth is at the back of the line with the lantern, that's not showing up in the hole anyway. At this point, so she moves all the way to the back, and Yost is there in your twenty foot radius. We're covered. Yeah, you see. What I mean? think it's primarily so, for for fleeing. I think it's, it's yeah, it's an right. escape. Who's, it's escape thing. Yeah. Who's carrying the second lantern? Uh, Yost. Uh, you gave it to Yost. Yost, right? yeah. Yost. Yost and yeah. Elizabeth. And I only had one flask of oil in it, so that's that's it for that lantern. Unless okay. okay. Pull roll, pull a pull roll a d six, David. Okay. That's a three. three. Okay, so you're gonna it's gonna last for uh, your levels four. Yes. Uh, so two. It's gonna last for six hours. Love it. Wow. Not bad. Not bad at Great. all. Great. Cool, Thank you, man. Richard. I definitely should right. printed out more time tractors because I'm about to run out. Oh, well. uh, so then the second question is, David, are you planning on going down the hole with the cloak, or should Mort do it as we had talked about? I think, I think Mort just... should do it. Yeah, Mort's just peek over. It. Just sneak up silently yeah, and peek over you. the edge. You don't have to go down there yet. Well, he can look. Yeah. Okay. So first of I, all, hmm. you cast okay. the Brac you cast the Bracteros effect. Yeah. It, but you did this after the candle was lit, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So immediately, the uh, when the Bracteros effect is comes into into play, you guys notice nothing. On we are basically. It can sense that he casts a spell, obviously, but but you don't right. notice anything at all. You down below, you can hear the front people, Morton Gorn. You can hear a very brief shuffling of bodies. Nice, just like real quick, just nice. like a, and then quiet again, like maybe like okay. a small inhalation of breath, you know, yep. and that's it. So I suspect the light dimmed a bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as if someone were walking away from the hole. No, it was very brief. Come. It was very brief. It was just like a like a, a movement of bodies. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I mean, as they might uh, surmise that we are walking away from the hole, like at Timbers, right? Or backed so, up or something. Right. So if Mort puts on the ring and, and activates invisibility, making well, uh, well, I have I have to do it. So Avaricios oh, right. Avaricios goes blind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you go invisible. Okay, so then um, Mort's actually already got a rope around his waist from our little infravision stunt we were doing. Okay. So, Gorand, if you would just support him, Mort yep. will sort of shimmy up to the hole and let himself go down. You can sort of play it out a little bit as he goes down slowly until, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to not exactly Mission Impossible this, right? But uh, that idea, right, that he comes down and down and down a little bit until he can get a good look into the room and see one monkey, 20 monkeys. Okay. And so he, I, there I, may I, be a scream and a rapid pulling away of half of Mort. You know, it, I don't it, know. It is very much a, a like like Mission Impossible with the same sort of stakes, right? Like, so Gorn is like, <laughs> Gorn's like Jean Renault, right? And, and like, he's like, you know, straining and, you know, trying not to like cause any noise with the rope over the edge, which it very well right. could. So that is going to cause it. So well, I got an idea about that. We, we can put a loop around the spike and kind of belay it out off of that. So it 
doesn't slip sure, so much. I understand. Yeah. Not just yeah. that we should put a cloak or some piece of cloth betwixt the friction that might uh, happen on the edge of the mm-hmm. rock and the rope. Does it make sense? Like you would like a climbing pad for for it does, yeah, yeah. It does yeah. but is that a realistic expectation for Probably us? Probably not. Well, I don't know. That's true. I John, mean, just do your thing. We're really wriggling out of any consonants okay. here. John, go no, for it. We'll just lay off the spike and <laughs> uh, let like Mike feed it out slow. I got it. Sure. Okay, so getting all this prepped is gonna take a turn. Casting the spell, okay. doing the lanterns, blah blah blah. Right. Um switching the rings. Uh okay, so one moment, don't worry. Don't sweat it. <laughs> Everything's, everything's fine. Know, very, much, very much sweating. This. A pack of spiders okay. ambush you from behind. Okay. It's, Mort, it's please roll a D6 for me. Of Mort that I'm a little worried about. Mm-hmm. Mort, roll a D6. A D6? Mm-hmm. Is this my silent movement? Mm-hmm. So I want a one through three? Uh, it, yeah, this is for you being quiet. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mort is quiet on a one. I move silent three and six. Okay. I'm really imagining right, the first scene in Jurassic Park right now. <laughs> <laughs> three baby okay, okay you're nice Invisible, and quiet. silent i need you to roll d6 oh no yeah <laughs> is, this, is this my silent move silent check yeah yeah basically or being quiet don't roll a one okay uh one sec <clears throat> oh sugar uh, so Ted, roll, a d6, roll a d6 for me my thing is reloading Okay, I'll roll it. It's... Oh, we don't. We don't. Never mind, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, 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 okay. No ones, no ones. No, I need a one, dude. No, 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 you, you don't, don't want a one. Roll a one. You don't, don't want a one. one. Okay, it's, it's frozen. It's doing something. Okay. Two. Okay. <sighs> okay, so Gorn's straining as you as you quietly lower down. You're very, very quiet. And uh, Mort, you're just like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you lower down through the hole. Um, you are you have infravision, right? Now remember there I was do. there was like some emanating heat signatures that were coming up out of there, right? So yeah, but I, uh, I want to get a count. Like, is this a one monkey deal? Yeah. So when you when you lower yourself down, you are able to briefly before shit goes down. Oh. You, you are able oh. to you're able to count that directly beneath you and not that far beneath you. It's lit up with with heat signatures there are nine baboons that are all congregated below they are all looking up directly at you as you as you oh, lower yourself no. over the hole and looming over all of them and you're basically <laughs> it's pretty funny actually as you as you come down <laughs> out of the hole you're like literally like there's literally like the face of a huge yellow tusked forearm baboon like it's so tall that his head is just like looking at you <laughs> as you lower yourself down uh then they're, they're just sitting here in the dark right and they just sort of all kind of look at you as you lower down and you can see that visibility doesn't hide in provision huh invisibility doesn't hide in provision you're not invisible yeah, he the ring. Yeah, he is. yeah, the ring. We we made oh, you have the ring. Invisible, John. Oh, right. oh, 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 okay. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. Oh, oh, oh. oh, just a little blood pressure test for everybody. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. I thought it was just the Bacteros effect. Oh, it's um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you um, <laughs> so they're still there, and they're all looking. <laughs> they're all looking up at the hole, and you are literally like feeling the breath of this gigantic. Forearmed baboon, uh, forearmed baboon in front of you. You do not recognize this one. It seems to be a different one than the two that you've seen already. It is not Cisco. It is not. Uh, it is not. Uh, uh, Tresco. Tresco. Yeah, not Tresco, but it's close to that. There's um, another one. Tresco. Tresco. Cisco is not or Tresco. So this one has like um, uh, huge tusks. One of them is snapped off um, and bloodshot yellow eyes. Um, and it's right in front of you, like breathing on you, basically. And you can see it, like, and its massive nostrils sort of flare as it kind of takes in your scent, and it's like moving around, you know. And you can see all the baboons are like super on edge, like right below it at its feet. And you are lowering down, appear to be in the northwest corner of a worked room. Um, you're just gonna have to take. Uh, don't draw anything because you're not on this level anymore. This is on a different level because you're going down. Um, right. But this uh, appears to be a uh, 
50, I'm sorry, a 30 by 30 foot square room. You are entering out of the northwest corner of it. However, it looks like just with a small little drop, like you could literally just lower your feet down, you would be on a large mound of rubble that sort of leads up the, the northwest corner of the chamber. So that it actually isn't that far of, a, of an effort to actually kind of crawl your way up into this hole that you're in. You understand what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So there is, appears to be, you're not getting any heat signatures, obviously, except for the for the baboon. So it's difficult to take, make out the details in the room. But you can see that there is um, passageways leading directly south out of the southwestern corner and to the east out of the northeastern corner. There is also a door in the southeastern corner. However, all of those exit points are blocked. I mean, you are basically surrounded by by um, baboons. They are drinking in your scent right now, and they are definitely shifting around like they know something is wrong. Because you were like right amidst them. Yes, David. Right. Just a real quick question, just in case, before Mort does what Mort does. <laughs> <laughs> if, guys, if, uh... if, if hypothetically this was, though I doubt it is, this was the kitchen that we suspected was there, there might hypothetically be embers from a cook fire though it may not be burning anymore still a glow a bit for your provision so john all i'm asking is if there is a cook fire that is potentially in this room would there be any glow from members that maybe we didn't think about till now no <laughs> you know what i mean okay no all right um I don't know where so uh mort is a very <laughs> stout goblin he is not currently urinating on all the baboons below him <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. he's very 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 tough he is however frantically pulling on the rope and trying to get gordon's attention to hoist him back up uh if he does not hoist back up immediately um i'm, I'm gonna go down swinging so um first thing is he's pulling on the rope like pull me up pull me up is that enough of a signal john for me to know yeah of course yeah all right, I start heaving away. I, I like gesture, like, you know, help, help, you know, and try to start pulling him back up. Okay, so now I need you to roll D d6. Don't roll a one or a two. Can, does he get anyone's attention? Can anyone join oh, in? Oh, okay. All right, Gorin, you're, it's what totally you Jean Renault, man. You're just like, oh. <laughs> just slowly <laughs> following him up. You know, try to do it quickly, but also silently at the same time. Your muscles are straining. Um, more, you, it's like the slowest descent ever as you just kind of pass right by the eye line of this giant baboon as you reach the plane of the ceiling and, and disappear back up. Um, all right. He's immediately here. going to uh, be like miming the, down in the hole. Like you're wand, invisible. Wand. Yeah. You're I, invisible. I, I, I'm, right. I'm invisible. <laughs> Good point. Uh, can I de I can deactivate it even though you activated it, right? You have you're invisible until either I shut take it the off, ring off, Ted. Or or I guess if you take the ring off, yeah. or if you attack or Good something. One. I I as soon as I'm up and like on the edge of the hole, mm -hmm. I pop the ring and no longer visible to any monkeys. I pop the ring off and I start pointing, you know, wand, wand kind of gesture down the hole. Shall I? Shall I? I why not? <laughs> okay, why not? <laughs> All right. Um, I would say a turn past John, the I'm thing. going to trigger Laurel's cloak first mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that I am invisible. Mm hmm. I'm then going to belly crawl as <laughs> slowly and quietly as I can or whatever whatever is the the quietest thing I could possibly do mm -hmm. towards the edge of this hall. Uh, can you hand I'm, the wand up and have one of us do it? Or it you needs can't to be use you. the wand is the problem. Goblins are uh, very versatile. But not that I versatile. Mean, I don't know. Do you got, I mean, it's like an elf. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were being... Um, and I'm going to... Uh, man problem is there's light so they might see my hand peeking over the edge no i'm invisible you're, what am i saying you're invisible. You're fine. Just, you're invisible. now the minute i shoot well it doesn't matter it won't matter at that point i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna aim as best as i can i can keep it as much cover for myself as possible we've hoisted the rope up right so there's nothing they can climb up with correct it's okay. on me yeah, yeah. okay uh, there, there was do, you want, do you want to untie it? There, do you want to uh, untie it from the stake first so we don't try to run and you go oh. <laughs> so, we'll just look around right I'm, I may have to go back down and kill some okay. baboons. All right, sure, sure, sure. All right, so not to belabor this, I'm going to stick my hand over the hole, and I'm going to 
ice wand the ever living shit out of these guys if it seems reasonable that they're within the range of that wand john how far below are they it's not far right it's not far no it is not yeah, okay so i'm, totally I'm going to uh, what's what's the what's the distance and the aperture is it fair to say that i can hit all it's, of them or do i need 60, to be deeper to hit all of them you can you can judging by morse description you think that you can get all of them it's 60 feet long and it's 30 feet okay. wide at the far end perfect cone of gonna, attack yeah right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but i, I meant the, the, the i'm so excited hole. about okay. this i'm okay. like i'm, I'm like, gonna, gonna i'm gonna <laughs> i'm giddy and in fact and in fact john i'm gonna have the arcanum in the other hand <laughs> ready to recharge after i, I mean shoot honestly this. you should Four use the arcanum on the wand now david do you want me to i'll do it for you how about that okay you want me to do it for you okay before i do this john can i use the arcanum on the wand just to be sure uh, that yes. hasn't lost yep. sorry sorry to to make this convoluted Okay, so I'm going to use one Arcanum, the only one I brought, on the wand to recharge it. Then I'm going to do everything we just talked about. Okay, roll 2d4. And we'll fire. All right. Actually, you know what? Don't roll 2d4. I'll roll 2d4 because you're not supposed to. You roll 2d4. All right. This is the charges? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay, so, yeah, you pull out the Arcanum and um, it, you concentrate on it, basically. It almost takes no time at all. It's the first time I've, you've actually done this. And you can actually see a little bit of amber light sort of like pulse in the Arcanum. And then a little, it kind of collects into like a small little moat and pops out of the top of the of the rock and sort of wisps it way with like a trail of pixie dust towards the wand and sort of enters the very tip of the wand. Wands in, in D&D 2 are very much like Harry Potter wands, like they're little... Yeah. you know, like little yeah. things, you know, and it just goes and dip right on the top and you can uh, like a little, um, it turns into like a little frost pixie dust instead. Like it, I it love it. Tinkles down. That's very it. cool. Yeah. Did, did right. the Arcanum add 2d4 charges? Yes. Yeah. <gasps> okay. So, That's... um, you, uh, you can see too that the Arcan the Arcanum now is sort of, um, uh, darkens into like a, like a nondescript lump. No, it's slag, right? Well, there's no value in it after that. I recall. Correct. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave that on the ground. P continue the procession. We already discussed. Get to the edge of the okay. hole. Right. Fire. Boom okay. stick. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So um, it doesn't really matter if you're making noise or not. So roll 6d6, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> roll high, David. Oh, please roll high. Please roll high. Oh. Uh, can I do six at a time? Do I have to just hit it six times on the dice roller? Okay. Yeah, like click it six times and then roll. Oh, okay. Well, that's one, three. I, 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 I don't know how to do this. Sorry. Just roll I'm just gonna do one at a time. Yeah. Just, da, 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 da. Three. Yes. Nine. Six. Ten. Twelve. Fourteen. Uh, 14. Sixteen. That's right. That's everything, right? Six. Yeah. yeah. That's, not a great, not a great, not a great so roll. roll. That's average. You rolled average. That six saves your. How much was it? Yeah, Sixteen. Okay. One moment. Uh, and John, for what it's worth, though I doubt I'll get a surprise round. If opportunity comes to fire it immediately thereafter, I'm going to right. Like the first yep. thing I'm going to do after firing it once is firing a second time. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to pause real quick. I will be right back. Okay, I was just looking up quick some saving throws real quick. Um, so this way I'm going to do it. Um, I don't feel like rolling nine different saving throws. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to roll twice. I'm going to roll once for the big guy. I'm going to roll once for all the other guys. Oh, no. So uh, roll badly, please. All that's, right, so that's here we go. That's bad for us. Uh, the big guy, uh, it's going to be, he needs a 12 or higher. Here oh. we go. Thought I rolled it. Yes. And he failed. Okay. <laughs> he rolled a three. So he was a surprise. <laughs> the other guys need a 16 or higher. Oh. Wow. And, oh. oh. and they make it. So it was 16 points of damage. So it would be eight for all them, right? Yeah. Eight for them, 16 for him. Okay. Is there any sort of. Uh, this is maybe very third edition. Is there any sort of chill effect? Like up slowing or a, I can't recall. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So as you blast down the uh, the wand, so it goes uh, screaming down onto the baboons. They all shriek in pain and alarm, um, and 
uh, you can hear like the crackling of bones and them howling in pain. Um, none of them come up the hole at all, but you hear them basically uh, scattering as fast as they possibly can. Um, hey John, is it fair to say though that before they did that, we would do initiative and I would attack again? Because this is because you're so, assuming that they had a surprise round, man. They knew we were there. Yeah, but we would uh, still roll for initiative then before they got a movement on it, right? Oh, you're saying uh, yeah. you're saying we would already be an initiative, therefore this is a response to that initiative. No, 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 you're no, you're right. Uh so yeah, you uh you throw the cold down on them. Um yeah. And yeah, does anyone want to cast spells? <laughs> well, I want to cast this wand again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the wand is um the wand's gonna be yeah. a missile. So yeah, no one's casting fine. spells then, right? Yeah, okay. I can't I can't see anybody yet. So Okay, roll for initiative. I got a two. David, I think it's on you, man. You can be the team. Oh, there, there you go. go. There you go. Okay. Anyone moving? I, I, I want again. Oh, sorry, 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 guy. <laughs> no, John, um, but um, I will set my spear and ready for anyone to come up the hole. Okay. And uh, Mort is still right next to the hole, I hope. Uh, so he's pulling out his well, out the pin. It's basically and... on weirs at the hole. And everyone's behind on where well, in, in single yeah. file. Okay. It's that narrow. Okay. So yeah. I think then Gorand and I are like right behind on where then. Okay. So if he's setting his spear, I'm pulling out my sword and getting out my shield. Okay. Uh, yeah. What do I do? I guess I will take out. Yeah. I'll take out my mace. Uh, my mace to be ready. Yeah. Okay. On where? Go ahead. You're going to do it again. 66. Yeah. Okay, 66. Again. Oh. Okay. Six. Eleven. Eleven. Frozen. There we go. Thirteen. Oh, Thirteen. Nice. Nineteen. Nineteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That, that's it. Okay. Twenty-two uh, total. So saving throws. Yeah. That's big awesome. Guy. Big fail. Big fail. Uh, big guy fails. Fail. <laughs> And the little guy guys fails. Fails. Yes. So how much was that? 22? 22, 22 damage. damage. Okay. All right. All right. So in rapid session, you're like, um, you just throw down these uh, frost rays, well, frost cones, actually. And you can't, I guess, like the frost wand would probably illuminate slightly for your human eyes like you know what i mean just the magic of it you know so it's like a really cold right. white hue as you know like your cone just like yeah. and you can see these guys um uh it rams into the large baboon who gets like rockets back and just like he's just howling twice as uh, as he's doing like the t2 sort of thing where he's just like <laughs> rocket back um and you can see he's not happy about it at all the first hit of the one takes all of the baboons and they all turn tail and start yiping and uh trying to scatter away and then your second blast takes them and they all explode into ice charges and they go scattering across the ground nice um uh, Mort, baby. <laughs> the uh, the the large baboon, um, like just bellows as he sort of looks around, and then the darkness just descends, like whoosh, he just goes all the way dark. Um, and you, but you can hear him like, and he is, um, you see him, t t uh, well, you hear him running towards the east, directly away from you. Yeah. Okay, like. <laughs> Um, you can actually, it's more like a, like a horse galloping. You can tell that he's using all six of his limbs. Like, a, you know what I mean? As he's like running as fast as he possibly can and all six legs, just uh, all the way down the corridor, um, howling the entire way. Well, wow, that dude took well, like almost 40 hit points of damage, man. Yeah. If, oh, we, yeah. Um, <laughs> if we follow the plan, the point now is, is we do one of two things. We, we go down in the hole long enough to determine whether it connects with our existing map or we just leave now. That was the plan. Correct. I would say, group vote, if we're going to go down and look, we have to do it right now as fast as possible with the idea that we might be coming right back up. And what we all we yes. might see is what the room looks like with the light that we have now, right? I, I'm okay with like sending like one person down there, basically kind of what you did. I don't know what more you would see actually if you went all the way down than you already have. Hand me I'll a lantern for... and I'll go. 
what, one one addendum to that. If Mort goes, I also have Phantasma Force, which again is a hiding mechanism if used correctly. So we could right. both go and I could hide us if they come running back and we get caught empty handed, which I think we should do. Or I can go without you and eat this if someone's going to die. So I would say unless the Phantasmal Force can hide smell, uh, I mean, I got very lucky uh, before. They can seriously smell us. That's how we've been hosed by these guys before. Totally. I don't think hiding or being invisible is, if we're in the room, they're going to know it. I, I agree. I agree with one caveat, which is remember when we used it to make the tunnels look like they were dead ends and or mistake the trajectory. So before they get close to us, we can be creative. Like, right. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, think, sure. I think I should go down with you is what I'm saying. And, and I have the, the cone of frost again. I'm okay with dying. If you're going to go down, I'm going down is basically what I'm saying. For, for, for both speedy, of us. I want to go down. Okay, one thing going, to remember. I'm going down with them. One thing to remember, guys, as you go down, I'm all for you. Those things are fast, man. Those things are fast. <laughs> I know. No, I just want to look you, out one of the doors. On my waist, too, while we both go down. Or we won't have enough rope length, actually. Never mind. So We have tons of rope. Remember, okay. Onward convinced us to buy I all the ropes in the world. I think this has to be a quick decision because we're like TikTok. He's already right? tied. Yeah. He's already tied. Right. Can, we, can we say, as this happens, I say, give me a rope, and I tie one over my waist, and we both go jumping over the side. Yeah. Is that fair? Squeegee. I'm over the edge. I'm okay like, playing rear guard at the top of the thing. I don't think we want to try and have four people trying to get up the rope. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all should have hoist us up if things go to shit. Yeah. And also, like, if we get knocked unconscious, you can still fish us out for potential. Mark, although put you the, leave put us the ring. Yeah, put the ring back on, Mark, and I'll make yeah, you invisible. Ring back on, and he goes down over the edge. I trigger and... Laurel's cloak one more time, so I'm invisible. Okay. I go, I go blind, so Mort is also All invisible. Right. And oh, Gory, here. if you want to hand the rope to Yost, uh... yeah, I'll, I'll hand the rope to Yost, John. But I, so I will be braced with my spear in case like some monkey comes up through the hole. Okay. okay. Sorry, you, sorry to make this land. convoluted. Sorry, go ahead, Ted. Oh, well, okay. So one so, thing occurred to me. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah. Onward and go. Uh, onward and Mort go through the hole. Onward's got the lantern, right? Yes. We have another one up top. And it's invisible. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So then I'll have a shield and sword out. Let me go first. You should be behind me. Okay. I'm gonna have lantern and wand. You have sword shield. One thing to clarify with John. We may not want these rope tied to us if we're both invisible, but there's a line of rope going to a floating invisible person. Does the rope become invisible because it's attached to us, or do we need to untether from the rope and leave them dangling at the bottom of the hole, John? Um, there it could be invisible. It's fine. Okay, so yep. yes, there's the plan, guys. Okay, Go. sound good. Get us in the room. We're over. We see the room. We get the details of the room. We quickly check the three doors and see if there's anything we recognize. Okay. If we start to hear returning monkeys in anger and in, in numbers, we bail. Yes. Right? That's the plan? Yeah. Okay. I think that's a fair plan. Okay. Don't go far. Don't give it more than like one, maybe two turns, my friends. That's yeah. our plan. That's yeah. our plan. Yep. Okay. You got On it. Where, what, uh, what use of your cloak was that? This second. would be the, se the second of three uses that I just did. Okay. Make sure you mark it. Okay. Um. Okay, so you hop over the edge um, and you drop down. Okay, so you're basically on a. Squeegee. You're on like a. Uh, um, a a hill of debris, right? Yeah. So it looks like a portion of the 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 ceiling that you came through has collapsed in some time in the past and has formed like a basically like a a loose uh, pile yeah. of collapsed rubble um, into yeah. the room itself. Piled at your feet at the base of the of the rubble is a um, a, a messy pile of rope. That has um, that is knotted for feet holds along certain lengths. Uh, I want to throw that up into the hole. Okay. Um, so, we can, yeah, we can take that up the top. Yep. So uh, you are definitely on the same level as the baboon level that you have been on. You can probably surmise that. So if you go over to Albert, um, Ted, yep. you can pick yep. a random spot because you have not <laughs> been in this room. So you have to pick it. Um, okay. Just anywhere. All right. If you manage to link it up, you can move all of your lines over yep. to the correct spot. Yep. I'm just going to so adjust is... my map size here a little bit. Oh, okay. Albert is acting squirrely. There we go. Um, so, 50, 30 by 20? No, 30 by 30, you said. 
Yes, 30, 30 by 30 foot room. There is a passageway, two passageways, one leading directly south, one leading directly east. The one in the south is in the southwestern part of the room. The one to the east is in the northeastern part of the room. There is also a single wooden door in the southern wall on the eastern end of the southern wall. I don't know if you can see where I'm drawing, John, but I just drew uh, yes. what I think is accurate. I see it. Uh, I'm in the uh, southeast corner of the whole map, way down in the south. Yeah, you got it there, Matt. Okay. So there are images, uh, fresco images, uh, that of robed human priests that line both the northern and western walls, although they're very badly worn, and it looks like in some places they've actually been um, defaced. Uh, there is on the Eastern wall, there is a crude image of a simian creature, probably a baboon, um, wearing a strange robe that has actually been scrawled on the Eastern wall. That is not part of the normal Archontean hieroglyphics and fresco paintings. Um, you can see John, that there are, we... there are, there are wooden pegs that can be found on all of the walls. Mm but nothing that is hanging on the pegs themselves. Okay. So like a robing room, you know, probably do adjacent these, to a... Yeah. Do these ropes remind us of the, basically the corpse monkeys in the library who are robed figures as well, correct? There's, there's no robes, David. It's just wooden pegs. It, no, no, sorry, the, the, ro the robe in the mural, the fresco, does yeah, it does it appear oh, oh, oh. similar to those that we saw in the library is what I was trying to say, sorry. That's a good question, but uh, you no, it doesn't. Um, it's also a very crude scrawl. Okay. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it, it doesn't really depict anything that you would recognize. Um, and no, uh, Mort, you do not recognize the room. Although you do recognize the general, the smell of it, the, the look of the Arcantian nope. architecture, <laughs> all of it matches up with the Plunger Town vibe. I no, uh, uh, think... Go ahead. Uh, just real quick as well. Um, you, as you hop down, you are still hearing the retreating forearm baboon. You can hear, um, uh, the, I would say at the moment that you actually drop down, you can hear a door slam far away down to the east. And before it slams, you can hear in a surprisingly cultured voice, like not like a, oh, me thag sort of thing. You can hear a, they're here, they're here. <laughs> The old, the that, old exit. They're here at the old exit. Okay, this is so, the shot. <laughs> so, right, so yes, uh, so that, he he went to the uh, east, uh, correct? Mm -hmm. So I think it's safe to surmise. Uh, who knows what's safe to surmise? But let's let's There's say nothing you, safe about this. I know, I know what, what I was saying about that. My 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 guess is they would have been going westward if we were located on the eastmost side because they're probably heading towards their lighter or central location, which means, bear with me, guys, using my pointer. This is, these are the only areas now that doesn't mean where it actually is, but we know that this uh, north northwest of the library is an unknown, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it's going to bump right into the, the pyramid there. That that I'm not sure of. Like I said, it, but uh, yeah, so it probably would not. Do we? Oh, that's true. That we would know for certain that it wouldn't, because that's accurate mapping, unless it went up and to left. But even still, I think this. What if you guys I think can it's see probably. It? Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's probably here, somewhere near this junction. We also know that there are wooden doors, so we know there's a presence of wooden doors here that were barred, right? And then Squeegee died, and this is a wooden door as well. So it's yeah, it's also very possible up we're in here. here. Yeah, oh, that's true. Okay, so. That well, this corridor right here, I don't know if it's showing up. Uh, my my Albert's yeah, active yeah, squirrel. Yeah. Okay, you can see it. That could be the south exit. And so I'm going to run over to the south exit oh. of this room, John, and look south. You're right. You're right. Okay. <clears throat> I think we might be here in this corner. I mean, who knows? But I mean, it's yeah, we'll up. And then it, get out of so here. So you look east, uh, David. And I'll look south. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go east. I do want to flag one more thing. Not that we should do it. If we are in fact here, and we heard this door slam, if we all ran to our secret entrance, we could get into the mosaic room fast, and we would be here without them in a much better position than having to go back to Glasgow. But that is a risk. Just throwing it out there. If if, if, if then 
I love it. But you know, yeah. okay, go go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I just want to let you know that the combat and then um, the dropping down and assessing um, it is now three p.m. exactly. Um, okay. The okay. So first of all, uh, Mort's going down to the south, right? That is correct. Okay, Mort. So you you looked down to the south. Uh, hold on, I'm juggling a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm going back to your map. You can see uh, what were you just using dark vision? Uh, well, actually, it's a good point. David has the lantern, so whatever lantern light is uh, ambient, that's what I guess I'm using. Uh, so there is none. So because David went east, so you're using dark vision. Using it for me. So you have um there f from the corner of that room, looking southwards, you can see that with the dark vision, um that the that the passageway goes directly south for. Um, I have to readjust my, my scale now, uh, 20 feet before it hits a, another door at the end of the corridor. However, um, 20, I'm sorry, 20 feet. I'm sorry. It goes down 40 feet before hitting another door. However, 20 feet down the corridor, it opens up to the left. Okay. So 10, 20, then an opening or 10, then an opening, then an opening. Okay. So. To to my left. To your left. No, 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 no. To to the west. I'm sorry. To the west. Okay. So you're right as you're moving down. Sorry, Ted. Okay. So something like. Yep. This, and then I've got a door. Well, that didn't draw a door the way I wanted it to, but there we go. Okay. You. Yeah, there you got um, okay. it, Ted. And um, as you as you peer down, and you're only using dark vision, right? So all you're seeing is like shades of gray. Uh, I'm in for vision. I'm yeah. sorry. So all you're seeing is shades of gray. Um, but you can definitely smell that there is a, um, a kind of a gross, like fr fresh meat smell coming from the west. This this matches this matches that that corridor there where we fought baboons. the six baboons yes. and Tresty died. Yes. All right. Okay. So I'm confident that's the same thing. Now we, I'm we back know up that they hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wait for Onwear. I'm gonna I, while this is happening, I am sprinting east because I know he went that way. So I'm I'm making it as fast as possible. Okay, so, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dead run. Yeah. Okay, so you can get there really, really quick. Okay, so um leaving the northeast corner, you run for uh 50 feet, and at the 50 foot mark, there is a door directly to the south. Okay, and you're using the lantern, right? I am. The, the I am. darkened, the darkened lantern oh, with see. the spell on it, right? The Bractor, Bracteros one. Yeah. But you're yeah. and you are invisible, however, right? I'm invisible, mm -hmm. and but your my light, light is, is invisible. No, your light is not invisible. Yes, it is. I have Bracteros effect, Bracteros effect on yeah, but the light. So both okay, but it's not invisible. Like it, you know, it's it, it's not just, it's not the same. Enough. Yeah. Within, yeah. within twenty feet of me, they can see it, but outside Correct. of twenty feet, no one would notice it. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, after fifty feet, there uh, at fifty feet there is a door. You can see that the corridor stretches on to the edge of your lantern light. I'm going to continue. Okay, as you continue down, you go down. Um, after fifty feet, you go down another forty feet before you hit a dead end. The at the dead end, there is another door that goes directly south. Oh. It's the throne room. And you recognize awesome. you recognize you recognize where you are. I am fucking hitting the secret but secret door button immediately. <laughs> Boom, and I'm looking back at, at, at these guys like I'm going in here. What of us can not... see you? We can't see you're invisible. <laughs> oh fuck. And, okay. and by yourself. You're like a corridor <laughs> away from us. Like yeah, but, I mean but, no, but like plan, Ted, David. Not okay, hold, on, plan. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ted. Can can see me if I fuck yeah no party members can see the light right no fuck they have to be no, in you're it. invisible fuck and, and you went down another this this bank. also happens simultaneously at the same time yes. that Mort is actually scouting down because Mort went carefully you booked it right um Ted uh, in, the meantime, in, in the meantime in in the meantime Ted why don't you grab because I know that Albert is going to slow us down so you might as well you guys have correctly surmised obviously um so okay. why don't you, why don't you just wholesale move your little thing and attach it. Um, this is going to be a little It's, it's going to be a tricky. thing. So you don't have to wait for Ted, guys. What do you, what else do you want to do? 
Well, um, I want to go in the secret door because I think it's more likely we'll escape that way from the baboons who can climb the wall and we'll be coming back in a second. So my, the reason I'm suggesting that is even if we run back up through the tunnels, I think we're going to be in pursuit from an army of baboons and we do have the time advantage, but I don't know how to communicate that to you guys. Because the best thing we could do if he's running south to Garalad is sneak through the secret door and have them run a direction we're not even at and never have to deal with a pursuit. But I know just, that's a really risky choice. The thing is, you've got to make it back to us so that we know. Okay, so I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna do then. David, I'm going to dead sprint back. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. We're in a very narrow tunnel. Yeah. If they put 15 baboons in a very narrow tunnel, and you have your wand, we are going to cause so much attrition for good old Garalad. We just wiped out like nine baboons. And monsters don't heal automatically. So that guy is sure. down 40 hit points for a real long time. So one question, one question. And, and I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's like it's we're actually tactically not in a bad spot right now. And knowing what happened to the first group of guys, they might not want to rush us in that tunnel. They haven't totally been, fair. they haven't been eager so far to leave their area. They're defensive. One, so one, one, one question I'll ask John for clarification, because I think that's a really good point, Mike, is the cone shooting in a single person wide tunnel would penetrate the first person and hit people behind them? Or would the first target absorb all of that shotgun? No, blast? no, it would it would go past. So it would go through them as far as the magic. Would yeah, go. yeah, yeah. It would fill up. So we would hit the, the other baboons if they're behind them. Okay. Very I honestly reasonable think mind. you only you only got to do it one more time, and they're not right. going to be so eager to chase anymore. I, to, totally about, totally. About. I just want to make sure because if it's just one, then I'm like wasting the charge, right? Okay, I will turn heel and sprint back to you guys as fast as possible. Okay. That, okay. I want to go in that door so bad. Though. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it appears that the sound of the retreating large baboon yeah. has faded away. Yeah. So now it's just completely. Completely and eerily quiet. Okay, it, it's it's even more a little bit uh, trepid. Uh, the trepidation starts to rise in you because you correctly guess that they are on defense, like they are. They have fortified themselves in anticipation of you returning, and now you are there in their territory, infiltrating, and um, there is nothing happening. I think they're on the other side of that door, waiting for us to enter it. So the question is, do we still want to go through the tunnel or do we want to go through the secret door and get out scot-free? Well, now's our chance, guys. We should do it. Come on, let's do it. They're, they're on the <laughs> defense. It's so much easier for us to get out. It's so much easier for us to get out this way and they don't know it exists. It's 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 perfect. I don't know. Whatever, they, don't know they don't know what exists. The secret, the, the mosaic room, the oh, secret the mosaic door room. there. Okay. We established yeah. that they don't, they don't know exists. Yeah. I don't know, if you don't like it, it's very leery of trying to get like six or seven people through a little hole in the floor That's and, totally and then lead them down it. the corridor without getting into monkey world, you know? Okay. I, I'm down totally for fair. it. If you guys want to do it, I'll I'll do it too. I'll be happy the, to go. The only thing I don't like about it is that the big fast forearm monkey knows exactly the way that we just came. And so that's the way that they would probably come back. I 100% agree that they would come back that way. John did say that we didn't hear anything, which Nicely implies done, to me. Very well done, Ted. <laughs> which implies to me, again, I'm not trying to push us to do something. I, as the person who always does chaotic things, I'm not trying to push us to do something that no one wants to do. So let's be really clear that we actually think this is an interesting idea. And if not, I'm totally okay going back the way we came. The only reason I'm all dead. I think it's an interesting idea. Stop Somebody for a second. Stop for a second. Yeah. Just because it's a, a lot of movement here. Ted, uh, the the length of the eastern quarter is should be one shorter. The eastern quarter should be one shorter. One shorter. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll be perfect. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not a big deal. That's, just 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 move the whole thing one 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 block east. Yep. Yep. Oh, I, yeah, I know how I can do it. Okay, yep. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I just cut through project. that wall there. Sorry, I just didn't want to, all that effort to go to waste with with just, you know, the no, one small little 10 no, foot discrepancy. Important. Yeah. Super that important. would kill us all. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ted. That is there yet you go. again. There you go. Very appreciated. Oh. Okay. The only reason I'm pushing one last time is because John implied to us that they are not returning with any noise they could be sneaky 
But in other words, like we know from like right. the Alien Three style baboon rush before that it made a lot of chaos, and that these big guys stomp around. So, if we bring our team through, it is possible that they're just sitting there waiting. We go through the secret door; they sit there waiting forever. We can then watch on the mosaic to see if any of them come back, which is pretty cool. But I'm okay divesting from that idea completely. It's not that big of a deal to me. It's just a option. Go, Ted. Okay, I have a proposal, which yeah. is that, okay, so Mort is standing there on the rocks. He's ready to go up the rope. Onwer is running back. Right? I can hear him coming. Yeah. I can hear him coming, but I can't see him. He shows up, mm -hmm. and he's like, hey, guys, we're 90 feet away from our secret door. Yeah. Um, but we're right by the throne room. Let's go. Mort's in a position to do it. Everyone up the holes really has to make the decision. Do they take the time to come down? So I'm, I think that like, frankly, I think Matt and Goran should decide right now what they want to do. And if they say like, fuck you, man, and don't come down the hole, there are questions answered. Yeah. <laughs> also, the, the ladder is established. You did establish the ladder there. So there is a way so, for you to climb down quickly. Let me, let me ask though to John, what is the actual distance between the hole and the top of the rubble? Uh, that is only about like seven, eight feet. Oh, so that's not that just, You could just hang down from the edge and just drop, right? Without taking damage? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. So we could do it like, fairly quick. Getting down's a little bit easier than getting back up. Like yeah, you do yeah, have to yeah. use the rope to get back up, yeah. All right, let's go. I'm down. I'll go. You know what's great about this too? Because we set up that rope, it looks like we climbed back out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No more talk. Let's, like, let's do it. I'm in. I am All also right. in. Let's do it. Are you sure? Okay. Is everyone sure? Because if we die, I'm sorry. Yep. We're doing it. <laughs> okay. We're doing it. okay. So um, everyone right. drops down. Uh, Yost, Elizabeth, and y'all as well. Um, Elizabeth looks a little on edge. <laughs> I tell okay. her, listen, it's okay. You have been here before. Yeah. I, we've got, we, we have been, you've got this. You That's have a right. feeling that if Elizabeth is put in any extreme danger at this point, because this is not the plan, mm -hmm. that a loyalty check will be required. Okay. If, if you John, put her in like, do check. <laughs> John, just just to support our retreat, can I do one other thing? Mm -hmm. As everyone's thing. going, as everyone's going through the secret door, I'm going to cast in fast in, in improve phantasmal force, force. Improve phantasmal force to make this Wait. hall look empty as everyone runs through behind me, and then I'm going to follow them. And that that now the improved version lasts two rounds after I stop casting it so it'll give me two rounds to follow them with it still up okay cool I so the idea good. is while the door is open it looks as if it's closed is that the idea if they open the door they're going to open it to an empty looking hallway right what even though y'all are running about? through it that's the idea okay we're talking about the secret door john at the end of the eastern hallway i'm talking about once that whole that whole yeah 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 once we've opened that the it's spell gonna look, yeah it'll not look just closed. that but it'll make the hall around it look empty yeah. meaning if they come in they will both see the door closed and an empty state so that we'll be covering our retreat and they won't know where we went unless they open the door that is literally next to the secret door that's where i'm casting it though that's what i'm saying it's no, a there's, there's no it. space to cast it you can't make the hallway Oops. look empty if they open it and they're inside the illusion there's two doors in the north of the throne room there david Yes, they would have to enter into the illusion, in which case they would dispel the illusion. Right. But if they open so, the door and we're standing on the other side of the door, it would still look empty. Correct? Until they come uh, in. Until they come in. That's all I'm trying to do is bias that time. <laughs> I, think I, I think I see what you're saying, yeah. Well, okay. right. All right, so everyone's running uh, through the secret door, is that correct? Straight yeah. at it and through yeah. it as fast as possible. Okay, so this is the one that actually had like the, um, the wire that was in between the ceiling and the wall, and you had to yeah. like find it and then pull it almost like a bus stop thing, like a chink. And then um, the panel goes shink and it opens up. Um, and you quickly hustle through there um, as on is like, and um, the, you know, everything's sort of cleaned up in the, in the hallway and everything. And, uh, and then on uh slips in afterwards and shink and back down. It goes completely silent, quiet, all, all smells of baboons, like basically ceases. And it's just like the, the heavy smell of old stone. Mort's going to run straight for the television that shows this hallway and keep an eye on what's going to happen out in the hallway. Mm -hmm. and, and if nobody comes, then that's really interesting. But I bet somebody does eventually. 
Okay. We're just gonna do a bass, uh, like a baseball line, and just pat everyone on the butt as they go. Good job. Yeah, that's right. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, now, see, here's something I'm really curious about: is the mosaic TV screen. And just in case anybody doesn't remember, like there is a big mosaic on the wall that acts like a closed circuit monitor for right, that's that, what I'm talking about that okay. hallway. And uh, I'm just curious about if those monitors are fooled by the illusion, because if monkeys Ooh. go in there. We That's, won't see. I don't know. Well, the illusion's only two rounds after I move, and moving cancels my concentration. So once I went through the door, there's two. But this isn't a non-zero amount of time. But yeah, we have two yeah. rounds where it'll stay up. But that's a really good. That's a really good yeah, thing. Yeah, that's to know. a good point. Okay, so you, you you are you running into that into the hall of seeing, into that big thing. Uh, I think Mort just goes through the cautious. secret door and just keeps going, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm going to say a turn goes by as well. So now you are in that large uh, chamber. So this is the large um, 40 by 40 by 40 foot square chamber that where the ceiling actually depicts the stars uh, above Arden Vool. And on the northern wall, you know there is the living mosaic, which depicts the long stretch of the hallway that you just went through. And yeah. on the um, on the south wall, is a patch of looming mosaic that shows you a place that you've you've been perc that's been percolating in your mind for some time now. It has. They, it has. Yes, a, a long row of of uh, of pillars with statues upon them. At the very end, a huge uh, uh, a huge sitting statue of Thoth with uh, naves that kind of jut out from either side all the way down, showing you the great hall of shrines. Um, and you know, you know what lies down there by the other end by the statue. Um, however, yeah, so you're, you're, however, so your <laughs> however your interest right now is primarily this barren stretch of hallway that you just left right. as you watch carefully. Um, the mosaics do not move; the tiles do not shift. How long do you wait? Till that spell wears off, at the very least. Yeah, two turns. So, two rounds. Do we want? Do we want to just yeah. camp out for like an hour and take a beat and just watch out of curiosity? Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not that trusting. So I would like to have me and Yost and someone else like guarding the entrance to the secret door in case some, they they actually do know where it is. Also, guys, remember we still at at least at this point we still have a finite amount of light. We Very can't. Good point. We can't just chill out for an hour burn up all that light and then be stuck we have a now, long way to oh, on. one of the lamps so this only lasts for two rounds after your concentration is over not two turns correct two turns. okay okay so it's done uh, oh i meant two rounds i'm sorry i meant two yeah, rounds. it's, it's that's gone my, that's my mistake okay. so that, okay. that spell yeah. is over um, so so yes, now i now i really do need to know how. Lanterns. absolutely we should definitely kill a lantern at this point and save Let's the oil. lantern okay the hooded one i gave to yost He'll well, kill. you have it actually because you went down oh, into I have the... it. That's right. I get. I got it back. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna that. staunch that. Yeah. Right. So however many turns have expired from uh, my first giving it to him before Mort went down. Yeah, I like got four. it. Four. Uh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Let okay. me let me mark that on Elizabeth's lantern too. How many? How many are you saying, John? Uh, uh, or you can tell me later if we. Yeah, you're. Is Elizabeth staying lit? Yeah. Okay. So Elizabeth has um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more turns on it. Seven more turns. Okay. Yo, okay. So I don't even fucking know now. <laughs> so, so my, my, <laughs> my sheet's a mess. I should have printed out a new one. Uh, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. When you get players like... this good, you know, it's hard to keep up. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So what are you doing? Right, I, well, I just like to congratulate everybody. Well done. That was. Well done. That was well that done. was pretty cool. That was. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was exactly what we were hoping for could happen. Just really, to make that really. connection. It really yes, is well, amazing. Well done. In the back. We have another hour to play. Let's go. Let's, <laughs> come on. Do it. Let's do it. What, what are you doing? Well, now All we right. got to figure out what that is. We need a new plan because <laughs> our plan didn't have this in it. <laughs> uh, if nothing shows up in the living mosaic. Wait, you're not. I, am, you're, I need to know if you're looking because the spell is over. Uh, so how long, you, how long are you waiting to looking. watch the, the mosaic? Should we just give it a give it a turn? At least like, give it, let's give it at least a turn. Wait. Okay, one yeah. turn goes by, nothing happens. All right. You want to give it yeah. another one? Well, All right, let's, guys, let's talk no. for ten minutes while we're watching it and come up with a plan, Matt. All right. Okay. 
Uh, one thing I can do if we are worried about maybe them finding this, um, I can cast alarm uh, on this, you know, uh, basically on the entrance to this room, which would give us a heads up if they start, you know, if they start following us somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, uh, also right. don't forget that there is a teleportation circle in the northeast corner. Right. We only have one tile. We need, what, nine for one of those? Quite have a you few. ever test Six. putting a tile in and Six. just seeing if it had any we response? We Should I test that? Before. I, I have a tile. Should I just test putting a tile in while we're waiting just to see if there's any Good. response? Yeah. I'll do it real quick, John. Okay, so um, as you're waiting and watching, uh, yeah, you pull it out. Do you? So there is that s small stone block with six depressions in it. Do you put it in like, one particular one? There are like in a row, like six square. Uh, depressions. I, presumably, I would put it in the blue slot if there's a color affiliation. There is no color affiliation, actually. No, because remember, we at one point found, <sighs> we found the code. details. Yeah. Um, I don't remember where in our notes to go to certain places, but I got the impression that you needed more than one tile to activate any of those. You're yeah. right. You're right. I'd still put be in, curious to see what happens if you put a tile into a spot. I'll just put it in like the northmost spot within the circle. So it's a it's a long it's a long oh. rectangular block with six squares in a row. Leftmost right. spot. Leftmost yeah, spot. Leftmost spot. Okay, so your tile is um, delicate. It looks like glass basically, but it appears to be um, well made, like not as delicate as glass. Um, and when it, what what color is yours? Blue, Blue I believe. Blue. Okay, so when you get close to it. Um, and you're about to set it in, you feel like an almost magnetic pull and it pulls the last, like the, for the last like couple centimeters, it actually pulls it out of your hand and ratchets into place. Like, mm -hmm. um, and you can right. hear like a firm, like locking, like a shink and that, but nothing lights up. Nothing happens at all. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, so, so once you more, that, you want to push it or yeah, pull it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah see, okay. see if it comes well, back out. Too. Nothing seems to happen. It does okay. appear to fit perfectly. It is definitely made for this device, but nothing. Else. Yeah, cool. That's good. Can you get okay, it back? it's fine. I'll stow. Sorry, Ted. Can you get it back? Yeah. Can I pull it back out and stow it? John? You can. Yeah. There's a little bit okay. of resistance, just slight, almost like a, like a like a not a non strong magnet, you know. But then you just kind of pop. It pops out. Okay. Lovely. So thank you. So John, I have I have a question. I don't know if we could if we have enough knowledge to infer this, but the thing that the piece of info that we got about the teleportation tiles and the place where they go, it that we got a specific formula and it said it right. went to Lady Clementia's asylum. Yep. Right. We don't know what that is. Is there any way that we could look around here specifically to see is this that could this room that we're in be her asylum you'd have to judge that on your own but the one thing that you do know is that you do uh, if i didn't tell you this at the time you're reading the books you definitely would know that lady Cam lady clementia is the wife of marius tricotor you did tell us that yeah and i i feel like you told us when we were reading that that it was like a major location deep much deeper in the in the arden mm. than than we think this is is the impression mm. that i got yeah. but i might have Probably just like interpreted that okay well i mean it, that, it does I, I just thought i'd throw that out there just to see like we look around yeah. we don't see anything like lady clementia was here um <laughs> well so because you, this once again you want to kind of like uh the 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 module is well designed right so um, most rooms have a purpose like they're, you know, th this is a very strange room. There's weird things going on here. It's also beyond a secret door, uh -huh. right? And it has basically viewing screens like these living, these living mosaics that keep an eye on very, spe asylum. very specific places. One oh. is exotic and obviously hallowed for the priests of Thoth. One seems to be quite mundane, yet it's watched. Mm -hmm. So... You draw your own conclusions, you know, Mar uh, from what you've read about Marius Tricotor, not much of his life or deeds were centered around the the priesthoods of Thoth, right? Like it's okay. much more of like a military <clears throat> sort of thing. You know? All right, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I like your thinking the Matt, and it may be worth, you know, docking in our heads that this also is like a the ceilings covered with stars and things like that as mm -hmm. well, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, another good, good log to keep is indicator. sort of like when you when you encounter teleportation rings to make notes of where they were found, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, oh, that is a good idea. I'll add that to the log. Yeah. It's plausible that the one we saw in the palace could have some affiliation with a, a big named as well. But yeah. anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, so, John, one one thing that um, I, Avarisus would like to do while we're looking, while we're taking this you know short pause, is um, try to kind of reassure Lisbeth. Like, we've been here before. This is what this screen is. This is what that thing is. We know our way out from here. Yeah, we made it before. Mm-hmm. We, you know, this is good. That's a secret door she, they don't know about. She's you know, feel, she's feeling better because um, the secret door is obviously like a a barrier of of, of safety. So um, you're you're free of loyalty checks for the nonce. And uh, I guess the other thing, guys, is uh, we need to remember the sequence of events to not get murdered by giant statues down at the end of this hall. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's a, it's a hobby. Uh, yeah, yeah call back to your Thoth. genius with the twine. Sorry, well, Ted, go ahead. Well, it was the, the symbol of Thoth with the twine, but I don't... Was it at the, in this hall or was it in the next section? Well, no, it's in it's down the hallway a bit, but we're, we're kind of heading that way, and so we need to remember. I don't want anybody rushing ahead. Um, it's down... Like if uh, right now we're in 17, or at least the room that's labeled yeah, 17. It's in room 19? It's in room 19. Yeah. And the other thing to, okay. that we have to remember, if we do decide to uh, go up to the Hall of Heroes, I don't know if that's what we're going to do. We need to remember that the only way we were able to get back out before was because that statue moves back in the way, you had to be able to turn into a gas, right? Yes. So unless we, you know, we just Somebody make sure. go in. Yeah. If we plan to go up there, we need to make sure we have a way out. Although really good, really good we did reminder. find a secret door to some tunnels that are heading west that we did not explore. Right. So they, um, right. Cool. all right. Well, I guess. I mean, I do kind of want to continue to mess with Garalad. <laughs> uh, hey, I'll do it if you will. <laughs> um, um, so yeah. We don't have the disco ball with us or the new tripod we wanted to have made, but we're still we, in the same. We connected some dots. Okay, so we we need to we need to figure out a plan. It's still the same turn from when you entered in here. So one turn mm-hmm. has gone by. You have not noticed anything from this one turn watching the mosaic. Mm-hmm. I'm about to knock over another turn. Do you want to wait? Continue. I, I'm okay, wanting? guys. Spending like two more turns just to see what happens here and, yeah. and to plan out where we want to go. Right? Yeah. Because right. I set it at three, but I think at this point. I would love to go do spaceships town, but Matt's point about not having a gaseous uh, form potion. Like unless we can figure out some other way to move those statues, that's, that's really bad. I so, still think it's a good idea to go to the burning head as planned. We just have this route rather than the old one. Is that fair to say? The broken, yeah, and head. We also, uh, broken head rather. Yeah. Yeah. And we also wanted to um, kind of reconnect with the goblins, talk to them, find out what was going on with their signals on top of the pyramid and stuff. Maybe we, maybe we do go back because remember that I think the thing that we wanted to do in the spaceship is deal with like that, you know, floating death droid or whatever, which was going to take some equipment, you know, or some thinking or some strategy that we haven't really thought of yet. One to frost. Yeah, so why don't, why don't we um, <laughs> look the frost one solves all things. Uh, this, yeah. is, this is the BFG from doom. Um, I yeah, I think I think it's a good call to stick with our plan. Go back okay. to Burning Head, come back. Okay. You know, is that does everyone see. feel good about that? Yeah, I, I think feel so. Really good about that. So, so how so are you doing do that? All right, so um, we would uh, we're going to walk down down through eighteen, the hallway there. That was the place where the two skeletons were. Where yep. Gorin got his cursed boots. We're going to keep on going down that hallway before we enter that room with the statues. We're going to recreate the old trick that worked before because it ain't broke. I still have, have the twine. And four we have four symbols now, though, instead of one. So it'll be a little faster. Okay. Also, prior to that happening, Mike did say he wanted to watch this thing two more yeah, uh, turns. Yeah, I agree. On. So did anything I mean, I happen think in would, the two turns? Yeah, and it would take that long to kind of talk everybody through yeah. it and stuff anyway. Okay. So at the, end, sandwiches. at the end of the two turns, um, you do see the mosaic start to shift. A couple of them start to move. Um, it is the door that is right on the other side of the secret door. 
Okay, the door slowly opens and you can see a very rough geometrical shape of a very, very large baboon um, move through the door and peer its head around and look down the corridor. So basically you're seeing the back of its head from the point of view that the living mosaic shows you. And you looking see- Looking west. Looking west. And you see right. uh, two smaller baboons kind of come out from underneath its arms and sort of on all fours, very, very quietly hugging the walls. They kind of crawl out and they sort of peer down the hallway and they're sort of like doing this. You know what I mean? And you can hear, and, um, and, um, uh, then you can see the forearm baboon take one of his like lower arms and make a gesture. <laughs> and like, you see a whole bunch of them kind of come out. Like you see like nine more baboons and then following like rumbling through and pushing his way through a door is another baboon, like a huge forearm baboon. So there's nine small baboons, two forearm baboons, and they slowly make their way quietly down the Western corridor. I would have been terrified of them following <laughs> us in that, that tiny passage. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. I like this. So ideally that candle's still lit and uh -huh. with the rope up at the top of the hole, they think Good we're thinking, up Matt. Good thinking. So I one, love this. The candle. one that opened the door in the first place stays right by that door while the nine baboons and the other, the, the final large baboon, um, disappear, um, down that corridor. All and right. Can we see I'm John? Assuming that, I'm assuming that the mosaics are too pixelated for us to distinguish which baboon is which. No, you can't tell. And at right. this point, too, the the presence of the large baboon guarding the door basically shuts away the view of exactly what's going on. Right. Um, beyond it. Okay. Interesting. Okay. okay. So just to clarify, then, is this like a security camera that has a field of vision? We're like looking down the hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it rather than like a a graphic representation of the whole hall, we're literally looking like pretty much, an aperture. Yeah. Basically, like where it, 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 the, the the camera seems to be like where the wire was pulled to open the door. Although you can't really, this you know, you, so you have no cool. frame of reference okay. for why that would be. But yes, if it was a CCTV, right. would would have been right where that where that catch. That's so cool. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, onward through the uh, the sequence of Thothian, etc. Guys, do we have confidence in this, or do we want to use the alarm spell? I could, I could save it and use it somewhere else, or do we have? Well, question feel... about that: If yeah. you cast the alarm spell on the door, uh -huh. what is the range at which you will know whether it's been tripped? I don't think that it has one, as far as so I it's know. Not just an audible alarm. It's right. It goes off. It. I mean, I can set it to go off either way, but um, so far I've only used it to go off quietly. And how do you set this alarm? This is the shrieker thing. This is the shrieker. Yeah. I don't think mm -hmm. you should do it. If they I can, can hear it through that wall. No, you don't actually repeat. use shrieker. You, you're not firing off a stone and making a loud sound. No, 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 no. Yeah. But, but still, yeah, we can be quiet. I, I don't think that they, if they knew that this secret door existed, they would have come right through it. Yeah. I'll say, I'll say, uh, let me ask one question, Matt, because I don't have this spell in front of me. What is the duration on this alarm? And does it just happen in your head? You hear it? I can set it either way, right? I can okay. set it to be audible or only I can hear in my head. And it's an old school spell. It wasn't really in OSE. So uh, just in the earlier versions that I've looked up of the spell, it didn't seem to have a, a duration. I, I can cast it once. Once. I, I think I remember it being eight or nine hours because it's supposed to last while you're sleeping. If you can cast it silently, here's why I like the prospect of you casting it. I don't I think... The apes, and, and likely not Garalad, know about this. But if right. the alarm were to go off, that would tell us that someone else did. In my mind, that did, no way of knowing 100%. And that might be useful for us to know, even mm -hmm. if it isn't Garalad and the apes. Kind of like the, the dwarf that ran off. It's like, up to you guys. But I, th I think that's like an interesting, I, if it's nine I don't hours. I why we wouldn't do it. Because yeah, I think we do the it. Thing, if, say they discover that secret door, and they start exploring through there. If we've made it through the giant statues of death by then, bring it, monkeys. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, like, you uh, yeah. but, but, but do it only in your head so they don't know they've triggered the alarm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, All that's right. fine. And I can I can do it like right to at the uh, entrance of the uh, room of stars there. So it's still like, yeah. what's that? 10, that's 20, like 30, 40. Yeah. Love it. So. 
and it's not like I have to cast a spell. I can just like use the the, the command word or whatever to do it. it. Yeah, let's do okay. it. killer. Love it. So man. you cast an alarm, and then we all head towards the statue room. We pass through the statue room. We go to the staircase at the end of the corridor, and we go. Actually, I think we go down, don't we? Oh, you're right. We do go down to the goblin level. Yeah. I think so. Because this level is above the debouchement, I believe. Yes. Is that right, John? Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Let's do it. All right. Okay. All right. So you move down the uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 foot long corridor. No, actually, no. You're moving down the 20 foot corridor into this chamber. So this chamber here, you see that there are still the um, the ancient skeletons. Um, you've disrobed them of the Setite cultus, which have not ancient actually and they are not ancient um so they were actually corpses but uh yeah you you basically looted them this is where you got the cursed boots and the onyx figurine um and Arms, keys. the holy symbol of set keys yeah do anything in this room no nope i don't uh, think so no. i Yellow. mean it doesn't does it look done does it look any different from where we left it no okay good. Uh, all right continuing on it's going to take another turn. Yeah. Now, what do you do when you approach the statue rooms? All right. So we're, I mean, I don't have enough. Uh, 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 well, I guess I do have plenty. It's only what, like 30 feet. So we can take the twine, cut enough so that each one of those four uh, holy symbols is on the, uh, the piece of twine so that one, you know, four people can hold the, the symbols with twine. The, the twine trails behind. You mark, you enter the room. I guess I'll, I'll go first to make sure that it still works. Okay. And I'll have the holy symbol of Thoth out and available. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, so you, you move forward. The statues on the northern and southern sides, um, uh, with their ibis headed versions of Thoth, right? They kind of step forward. Uh, do they have, I can't remember what they, 12 foot tall, 12 foot tall, begemmed eyes. Yeah. Okay. So they, they step forward and they block your way, holding forth the symbol of Thoth. They go, you know, they, they are standing in front of you and they go dish, dish, and they step to the side. And then I'll continue on through. I'll set the holy symbol down on the ground. So the, the fifth person can pull it back. Right. Cause okay. we have, I just checked, we have four total in our party now. Mm hmm. And what are the, there's four of us and three retainers. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So we will need to do this string trick. Okay. Okay. So doing the string trick, um, it does work. And we'll say that a whole other turn passes by. It is okay. now 4 p.m. As you uh, slowly but surely make your way across this very deadly room. Um, and just remember that this, is, this room was extremely richly decorated with... Uh, uh, images of white ibises imparting knowledge to genuflecting humans, baboons, smashing crocodiles, and so forth. And the ceiling is a cerulean blue studded with gold stars. Um, and it's actually mm -hmm. lit. This one is actually lit with um, with perpetually burning torches on the eastern and western walls. Do we want to take one? <laughs> yeah, I, I, weren't they like a, I mean, a fix? They, were, they were in there. We tried uh, to take oh, them. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, sure. Let's move on then. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't seem like a, the kind of thing we would leave sure. there if we had a choice. Sure. Especially sure. when we were running through here with no, like, hardly any gear last time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So moving into the stairwell, this is a stairway down granite. Um, and there was numerous cobwebs here last time, but you cleared most of them those away. Um, this is also where I believe it was Squeegee at the time encountered a, that a, a, a certain a certain purse with no, a, a certain was, amount of coins. It was, it was Mort. Was it it was Mort. Mort. Squeegee was dead. Uh, <laughs> and thanks for talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, do you make any? Do you wait here at the stairs, or you you head down? I, I think um, we can. Just go down. Should should we have two? Um, yes. Like the other. Our, let's do our thing. Yeah. Do the thing. Oh, we me and uh, Goran go down first. Yeah. Also, don't forget the Bactos effect is still working. It's yeah. Let's, so like let's have several hours. So we do have yeah. the lanterns, twenty foot. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. All right. So infravision patrol. Switching the map. Are you going to reticulate your splines? 
that we're articulating. Should we right take now. a break? Just a couple. Is uh, this a good spot? Yeah, we can take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, so you move down like uh, 125 feet down this sort of circling staircase, a granite staircase that goes all the way down, brushing away cobwebs. It takes about another turn to get down. Um, before did you start you... recording? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. you were going to give us more warning than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone now knows what you're really like, Ted. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you debouche on the debouche Mont level. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got the map up here and everything. So you can see yeah. that no one seems to be here. Doesn't seem to be any sort of presence of anyone has been here in some time. Um, um no evidence of goblins. They're, they're little pellets or uh their fecundity about the place nope uh, the place looks relatively familiar yost it looks very familiar he's a little bit unhappy yep. that he's here for like the third time now but <laughs> <laughs> why do you do this to me guys why do you always take me here it's not that nice just put the ring back on you can be blind and you'll be over before you know it okay so you go through the southern door uh yes let's listen at it because that door right to the east of it had a light coming underneath it. Right. Maybe we should check inside there. I kind of want to. I, I kind of want to do a little to. exploration, guys, if we're here. I'm down yeah. to. Uh, I'd also say, hey, gentlemen, would anyone like to go to that fountain? I hear great things of those who suppeth from its waters. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing that can go wrong from drinking from that. I will tell you this. Oh, no. No sub a thing. All right. Um, John, I'll go ahead and listen at the door. Okay. Doors are exceptional at that. Except now. <laughs> yep, you, don't, you don't hear anything. You have some You have some beard in your ear. <clears throat> That'll do it. Anywhere else? Oh, it's fine. You listened. There's nothing there. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. You can open it. Famous right. last words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I do it. I open the door. Okay. You open the door. Um, there is uh, definitely a sense of palpable heat coming from the uh, immediately whenever you open the door into the corridor beyond. You can feel it coming from the eastern door directly in front of you. All right. So somebody with good ears. Now it's your time. Yeah. More going to more this sort of give a little listen there. Oh, the eastern uh, one, right? Yeah. The eastern door mort has a two and six on the old listen at doors can we both do it john can more than one person do it sure Mort burned his ear on the door john but gordon is fireproof again, once again dwarves prove they're the spirit race well you hear nothing well, well uh, i think we should open it yeah let's, let's do it okay you open the door um it leads to a corridor Arcantian workstone once again that uh, goes to the very edge of your torchlight at and ends at another door. So it's a thirty foot long corridor ending at a, another door. The heat is much stronger in here, definitely continuing okay. to emanate from the eastern side. And there is um, uh, a light, like a, a flickering light, coming from that door as well, like around the edges. Mm -hmm. And it, the stronger, hallway in stronger. here, nothing. On the no frescoes, nothing on the walls, nothing, nothing on the walls. No, okay. when you say, take... sorry, when you say heat, do you mean like standing too close to the fireplace heat or like the sweltering furnaces of a dwarven forge? No, it's 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 fine, it's just you know, it's a little, little okay, hot. guys. For what well, it's worth, next, I... next, next. Mike. yeah, I'm next. Can I take a mirror, John? I know someone has a mirror here, or we pull one out of Laryl's sack, and I want to try and hold it so that I can see underneath the door. And see if I see like footsteps or anything like that going back and forth or anything like that. Why don't you just lie on the floor? I don't know. Can you get your eye under the door? If I can just do that, then I'll do that. And I was trying to be trickier about it. Okay. So I don't think you can do either. Like the seam is not wide enough for you to get a bead on. Gotcha. Looking. Yeah. I am sure this is irrelevant, but because I've had in my mind for a long time now, where is this setite market, et cetera, et cetera. The uh, setite pendant that I have, I'm gonna pull out and like make it visible, just in case. <laughs> you, know what, <laughs> you know what? Also, um, no, just because I hey, I've seen the that backdraft movie. Maybe if we are gonna open this Whoa. door, <laughs> yeah. let's 
like get some of us at least out of that hallway just in case there's a big whoosh that okay. goes 30 feet down to this hallway. You've Yost got this. If, already, if it hurts, uh, it, yeah, if it hurts, I'll, I'll, I'll fix you up. Yost has already demonstrated a certain amount of fireproofness when uh, we lowered him into the pit to get the plunger. Uh, so he doesn't ever want to do that again. Is what I'm saying. I, I'm gonna do oh, it. I thought he wanted to. John, I'm going to put up my plus two shield over my face like this, and I'm just going to open the door. Oh, you don't want to listen to this one? Okay. No, let's fuck it. Okay. I'm happy. I'm happy to listen, but <laughs> it's boring. I love it. I love open it. the door. Yeah, we We're back out of the hallway and let you here. let you do your thing. Okay. So what, what what's right. going on? All right. I'm so... going to listen at the door, and then I'm going to open the door. Okay. And several people. Are, who are not Gorand are not actually in the hallway. We're outside, in case of I got it. Big okay, ball so of fire. You, you yeah. don't you don't hear anything. Yep. And then Gorin, you're opening the door. Yes. Okay. When you open the door, a wave of heat rolls over you. You know, it's not, <laughs> not da- it's not damage. It's not damage. It's just very very hot. As as a lot of escaping yeah. heat sort of rolls over you, and um, you are uh, you immediately like put up your hands, um, like whoa, geez, like as you see like a roaring thing of flame in front of you. Um, is the first impression that you get. Um, you see that you are opening up into a quite large chamber. It's exactly square. It is 50 feet by 50 feet, and you are entering in directly on the western side, in the middle of the western wall. In the middle, directly in the middle of this, is a 20-foot diameter pit of fire. Um, the pit is rimmed with a low one foot tall lip of marble and the fire is leaping up and crackling to a height of about eight feet above in the, in the midst of this chamber. So it's like a huge fire that's taking up this entire 20 foot pit. So it's like a massive amount of heat, right? Just like burning and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's basically it. There's, um, it's a little weird. There doesn't appear to be any exits out of this room just enters into this huge large room with all of this fire. I have a thought. Okay. Enlighten us. I mean, aside from the, you know, elemental that's about to come out of this and wipe the floor with us. Uh, what if there was something beneath the fire and we could staunch the fire, a means of egress with that in mind, I have five bells in my pocket, which are metal which wouldn't melt immediately in a hot flame, presumably, unless it was like molten. What if I throw one of the bells and see if it goes ding, 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 ding. If we can discern a depth, that's what I'm trying to do. It also could be some kind of illusion or something. Yeah, Or it could be an illusion, but I want to to heft a bell in there. Sorry, Mike, before I do so, you have have contrary? Well, I'm just also going to say that we already uh, encountered on this level in a kind of somewhat similar room, some sort of like dust elemental or something like that, whatever that spell was, right? Very so true. is this good? That is amazing fire, Ted. Nice job. Um, <laughs> John, I want to try to is there anything on the floor? Are there any chests? Are there any like bodies? Are there any like burnt and cindered ashes of like, you know, skeletons? Like, is there anything in this room besides the fire? Uh, no, as you're kind of, got your hands in front of your face and you're sort of looking around you're like there's nothing there nothing seems to be particularly charred everything's hot like it's very hot in here right um but um when you're looking carefully you can see that the only decoration of any sort other than the the marble pit itself like the 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 one foot tall pit is that there appears to be some sort of inscription on the top of the lip mm-hmm. On the it's stone, start, start going around, but it's it's too like okay. it's like right like the fire is like right there, right? So it's like hard to like you know you just you just notice right. there's some sort of writing on the top of the lid. No mechanisms down. and no other doorways out. Not that you can see, no. All right, as the party's ten foot pole, would you guys mind if I go experiment? Oh, you want to go read the? I would like. To, I would <laughs> like. I I don't. Onweir is sus of just a pit of fire and thinks. If I were trying to hide an entrance as a evil satite, I might put fire that doesn't burn. Anyway, um, I don't know. I'm being paranoid. I I either think it's an illusion or it's fire, but it's actually a a passage. I don't know why that's really like triggering my alarms right now. That's what I think. And I think the inscription may describe such. So I'd like to get close enough to where I 
can toss right. the bell in, and I want to do that first before getting close enough to read it. So okay. if I can do that from the door, John, I would do it from the door. Sure. In other words, and with the bell. Can I make one safety precaution here, David? Absolutely. Can we take a water skin and douse you with the water? Hell yeah. And and then maybe tie a rope around your waist and make sure the rope is water as is soaked as well. Maybe just I'm down. Give it a, okay, cool. And then if you want a fountain, there's a fountain in the next room. We could just dump him in the fountain and uh Oh yeah. I mean I I thought there might be a mirroring thing going on between the fountain and this, but that's that's too much to think about right now. Can I also go uh make sure my innards are nice and moist by drinking some of uh Avariciosa's wine skin. <laughs> uh, of course, my friend. And, uh, I, I passed over my uh, my uh, uh, little canteen of brandy. I never I never go anywhere without it. Oh yeah, brandy. That that's great. I yeah, love that'll it. warm you right up. Flambe, um, David. Uh, oh, but yeah. yeah, I I don't I, I don't have um, uh, water on hand. I can pull some out of the bag unless you guys have water skin already. I have my water skin. I'll use my own water skin to douse me. I don't care. Okay. I've I've doused myself. With okay. water and taking a brandy swig, uh, I'm going to toss the bell first from the door, John. In okay, case anything you toss it, ding, 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 and it goes into the pit. You can you can hear it like kind of hit something hard as it disappears into the fire, and it stops. Okay, right so here. it's a pretty shallow sounding. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. Okay, John, I'm going to pro I'm going to walk five feet forward and see if I can read the inscription. Yeah, um, as I watch him going in there, going around, I'm going to um, reach into the bag and pull out the stick with the marshmallow on it. <laughs> yeah and just stick it hold it out okay so you're actually moving like about 15 feet into the room just to be clear the the squares are 10 feet um yeah sure, and sure, sure. and you walk up to the rim the the ceiling of this room is flat but it is about 20 feet high just so you're aware so flames are going up about about eight feet it's really hot okay um if it's an illusion it's a good one because it it is like now, now it's like approaching a fire, uh, campfire sort of thing where you're like, ah, you, but you get, you get close and it's ro roaring all around you, but your eyes are focused on the rim, correct? Not the fire? On the rim first, okay. where the inscription is, yes. So you can I, see I, that all along the entire diameter appears to be mystical runes of some sort carved in there. They do not appear to be mithric. They don't appear to be any known language, but you, Onweir, can detect that it is definitely a strange language of ancient magic. And I cannot discern anything about them beyond that. You can discern you enough to know that, magic, that a read magic spell would probably line those right up in your mind. That's pretty awesome that I rolled a, a magic user that has read magic. <sighs> oh, actually, wait, I do have read, read magic as an illusion. That's what I'm talking about. Um, okay. Well, uh, I don't have it memorized. Do you guys want to camp out here for a few hours? <laughs> no. No, um, no, no, no. Not okay, sweat lodge. You know, no, the, thank you. The, the, the pure chaos in me wants to be a fire jumper and jump through it and see if anything happens. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's but quite mad I, I would be severely burned, but I really do kind of want to, like, jump through to the other side. <laughs> um, God, if he tries that, I'm going to yank on the rope and keep um, him. Okay, him okay, okay. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Guys, do we what want it, to see what happens what if am we I throw gonna, uh, you want to know, just, sorry, sorry. I yeah. want to see if I can get anything to catch fire. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab uh, a piece of cloth or like a torch that we haven't lit, perhaps, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to extend it out in front of me and try to see if it catches flame from the fire it or does. if it remains unlit. It does. The torch, the torch okay. lights up. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, so it's fire. I know a torch. Okay, so it's not an by. illusion. I just want to jump in. It's so bad. Uh <laughs> okay. at the point it's right this, there. This is actually it actually matched up pretty well, actually. Uh, uh um what's her name? Lizbeth's lantern goes out at the same time that Onweir's new torch gets lit. Perfect. Okay. All right. Does it really matter because the entire room is lit quite well? <laughs> and I I'm gonna check one other thing, guys, because I have chromatic orb and I want to make sure I have nothing that would be useful because I think I might Let's see. Uh, for those of us still out in the hallway, I take it uh, nothing untoward is going on out here, listening and everything seems uh, fine. All right. And uh, if 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 uh, Mort were to step away from any obscuring light, well, of course, Elizabeth's lantern just went out, so he can't see anything with infravision, say to the south. Uh, no, you can't, your infravision is not going off anywhere, which is fine, but it is. It is rather dark. You're basically going now by like the ambient light of the fire coming from the open door. 
Right. Um, so everything that's sort of, I would say, like beyond that second door, you know, back into the main corridor is probably dark. All right. Well, I will uh, give my last flask of oil that, uh, that Mort is carrying. She's or does got, she have she, She's got oh. two more. We're good. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a Yost lantern like, uh, as well, which you snuffed out, but you could relight. Well, it's actually David's lantern, and I think he's got it back. Okay. okay. Come on, guys. What are we going to do here? Are we going to go down that southern corridor? The the old, I have one question, John. This seems obvious, but is there any – this seems a very mag, like a magical fire. Is there any uh, sign that this might not be a magical fire? Like, if you look down, there's not obviously obviously like fuel burning. There's no wood do, or do, anything. Do you go up to on, up next to Onweir and investigate? Sure, I'll walk up there. Let's okay. investigate. Yeah. Okay. So when you reach up to the lip as well, you also are like, oh, my God. And, and you look and you're – both you and Anwe are staring into the fire, and you can see that, uh, indeed, Everest is really like, wait a second. There's no wood. It's just it's just in a pit. It's just like, like freestanding fire – taking up the entire pit now obviously when you look in there and you're observing this you can see clearly that make sure i get this right uh <laughs> you can see that it, directly in the cent you can see that directly in the center of the pit there appears to be a relatively large no actually no, no it's not large it's relatively small actually a very small golden key that is just sitting right in the middle of the pit. Ah, well, that's now, not tempting at all. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's very interesting because right here in my bag, I I have not only like a, a little like fish hook, like one of those three pronged fish hooks, but also some um, some wire. It's very strange. I it's just right here, like a little spool of wire. Matt, I love you. I, it, I, 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 I didn't do it. It's just right there in the bag. <laughs> this is amazing. <clears throat> Grab it, baby. The proper response here, Matt, would have been, I know. <laughs> no. um, All right. You yeah, know, so I was just picturing this as like a giant trash disposal unit is for the dungeon, for the complex. Well, it may oh, be. It's going to all die in it. So <laughs> if you could, out. like, mm. uh, you know burn cursed items with it or something like that. But um, hiding a key sounds like a pretty good solution for using this fire too. So you going to try and rope it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got my little tiny uh, miniature grappling hook and my, my wire, which won't catch fire. I mean, it might, it might get the little hot. So I'm going to get some little like gloves uh, and put those on, but then right. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, toss the, the fish hook in there and try to fish out the um, fish out the key with twine. No, 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 no. The, I had some wire. <laughs> Out of Laurel's sack, he got metal wire. Metal wire. Okay. Yeah. Or you could get like a metal rod with a hook on the end or something like that, right? Metal yeah. spear. You could. How far? How far down does it? Is it? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll say a turn goes by um, for you to rig up this little thing out of Laurel's sack, um, and you reach in and you hook this key on where as you are. Uh, as you were staring into the flames, kind of to tr like trying to resist the urge to just walk into them um, and immolate yourself uh, while <laughs> Avaricios is hooking this up, um, you can see at the moment that Avaricios is done, and he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get the key. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, throw that thing in there and try to try to hook it." You're sort of enchanted by the by the by the fire itself like it's uh you know like it's taking form and all kind of stuff and you could swear as you're like you're as the heat is buffeting you and you're just sort of staring into it trying to resist the urge to jump in that you could swear that standing right above the key in the center that the flames are actually taking a form that appears to be vaguely humanoid and the that minute it, that happens john sorry yeah. go 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 and the minute the, that uh, happens I, oh go ahead go ahead david go go ahead i thought you were giving me go I'm gonna fucking ice wand that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ice you wand. Don't, you don't want to wait for it to say "Welcome, traveler." I guess or... I could. Okay, I'll I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm sorry. I'll wait. Five E is showing, bro. Okay, <laughs> I know. I, I just don't so want to fly it doesn't around. That's it what doesn't feel appear at. to have any legs, but it's like a like it's a, a creature of fire, like in the middle, right? But it it slowly starts to form even more. Uh, um, De uh, defined dimensions 
until it appears to be a humanoid form with its arms crossed in front of it. Yeah. A flame. And it's sort of regarding you as in, in, in regarding like you can't make out any facial features except for like two yellow points of flame within the flame that appear to be like eyes. And it sort of just like appears to be regarding the party. Avaricious. One moment, please. One moment before oh, you grab course. the key. I, I've, I've almost got it. I'm really close. No, I know. I know. my <laughs> first, I know. But one one moment. Can I speak in Mithric to this fire thing? You can say whatever like, you want or whatever, you know, like hail. Hail, Bean. Hail, hail, O oh bright star. What is thy name? It's so, Avaricious. Why are you talking so funny? It doesn't move at all. But when you speak, you see that the 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 runes around the lip pulse briefly, like boom, mm. and then and then go quiet again. Uh, I'm going to. Oh, okay, we could workshop this actually. Uh, Avaricious, you have not put your metal in there i'm just letting you know but you are ready to do that okay do we know any fire affiliations within the pantheon that we've uncovered or any like art and vool characters that i've forgotten guys well because we already know from the art invader that like names or a genie or something like that you know just like a yeah i mean come on he's he got no legs and he's standing like this it is a genie a fire genie or an afridi of some sort or elemental or whatever, yeah. You know, but I'm just checking uh, the notes real quick. I'm thinking he's guarding the key, and you should probably yeah. not grab it without having to grab it. He's going to attack. Yeah. Um, I'll say open sesame and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's entirely possible, David, that the words that we can't read are a way to appease it or control it or hundred percent similar thing. I can just come back with read magic. We can do it next time if we'd rather put this on hold for now. I think it's that probably might, reasonable. That might. I don't think we should grab. Uh, yeah, I know, the temptation to emulate myself and grab the key and do all of the worst possible things is very high. But uh, <laughs> I think, I think, oh, yeah. I think, uh, knowing that there's an affiliation between the two, I say, Abrisos, we should wait. Let's come back. I think. Yeah. You know. Oh no! no really? Stadium. I could probably. Oh, and he <laughs> looks up and sees the thing. <laughs> mm. oh, okay all right I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Come, come back to us david um but <laughs> before i do that can i just test out uh uh you know can i literally just say like uh i don't know uh, I, never mind it doesn't matter let's let's just go yeah do you want to just pee on the campfire before you go <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no it's just <laughs> I, I have it. a gift for you, oh great and wise and powerful genie. <laughs> Take the water, water, water life. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, yeah. No, I, I don't have anything other than like. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Let's just let's just come back All later. Right. Back cool. out slowly. We close the door. We nod. We say goodbye. Oh, to the monster. Okay. So you you back out. Everyone leaves. Yeah. Another turn. I wonder what that's a key to. Hmm. Another another person. Another uh, turn goes by. So you want to go south a little bit, guys? Yeah, I want to so go south. At, yeah, back yeah. out in the hallway. Elizabeth will uh, fill up another. I'll yeah. mark off another oil flask and chill. I will say I am still being excessively crazy or paranoid, but there's something about it. The key being the symbol for this ifrit in this portal that still makes me think this may be an access point to something else, whether it's literally a key or etc. I don't know. We should keep that in mind. Sure. Yeah. You know what we should do, man. Um, and this is from my brief experience with uh, playing a wizard. It always sucks to have to memorize the tech magic. It's super great to have it on a scroll. You mean read magic? A read magic, the tech magic, all of those like first level, like, you know. Yeah, it's true. Yep. All okay. right. Cool. Okay, so onward. We'll say that part of the same turn is like you are now back into the main corridor. Everything is quiet. Yeah. You're able to cool off. You're like, woof, all right. I don't know what the fuck that was, but. Um, and uh, Yost reminds you, uh, he says, Now remember when I first went through here that I did not go south, we went directly west, so I don't know what lies to the south. Yes, of course. Let's, go, let's go check it out. Oh, we, yes. probably <laughs> give it a we are adventurers and explorers, Yost. Surely you remember. Okay, so you go to you go south. Uh, the quarter goes directly south 10 feet wide for 50 feet before it turns directly to the east. When it goes, like, to, like so. 
Yep, and then it turns to the east, and it goes for a, another 10 feet before it opens up into a narrow chamber, it looks like. There doesn't appear okay. to be your, your dark vision is not popping off or anything like that. Okay. Um, but uh, if you like to go in, you can see that as your lantern light shines that there appears to be... Uh, it is a highly decorated room, and there appears to be a large sarcophagus on the southern side. Do you wish to go in and get the dimensions? Well, I think if Gorand and Mort get to the opening part, and we don't see any heat signatures, we just wait until the rest of them come around the corner, and then we can sort of see into the room. Okay, so Mort, the 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 chamber itself. Well, hold on, Mike wants to, I think, say something. I just want to remind everybody. I bet you Matt is thinking the same thing. That the sarcophagus room that we found on the same level, not too far away, was the one with all the crazy spear traps. Mm -hmm. So right. okay. that's that's why one of the reasons we didn't go in. Okay, <laughs> so Mort, uh, from from yeah. before entering the chamber, you can get the yeah. dimensions of it. You can see that the chamber is twenty feet by forty feet, and you are entering in on the western wall, twenty feet down. Uh, wait. Oh, it's 20 feet wide by 40 feet north to south? Correct. Yeah, 20 feet east to west, 40 feet north to south. You are entering in 20 feet down the western side. There is a sarcophagus which is directly in the center of the southern end of the room. Like, directly to your right as you're looking in. You got it, Ted? Now. So, like, uh, something like that? Yep, you got it, Ted. Okay. And there, well, you, you can close it off. Like it, that's the chamber. Yeah. And there's a car, sarcophagus that's in the direct center of the southern end of it, like line, like, like line north, north to south. Like oh, it's north like, to south. Yeah, the other way. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So there are frescoes all over the walls here. That Ooh. they're all water stained, and they show scenes. Of a, of a legendary hero that you have grown up uh, with tales of. Um, it is the hero Jockin the Proud, J-A-K-E-N. And Jockin the Proud was one of the warrior companions of Arden and Vul. And he was known to be a super famous spearman. And he went on a lot, lot of like Arden and Vool's like big time adventures and everything like that. He's like one of their one of their traveling companions, like a doughty warrior, right? Um, always used a spear. So these um, these frescoes depict his legendary adventures. There's some of him skewering a giant bipedal salamander, casting a spear at a flying globe of yellow light, uh, riding some sort of beast, but it's unclear what kind of beast he's riding because of, due to the damage and. Um, holding up Arden's cloak and drinking a horn full of beverage and other scenes like that. Um, he's Jockin is always identifiable because he wears, he always wears his signif, his, um, his, uh, what's the word? I'm signa, signa, what, what's the word? Signature. Signature. Um, his signature tall plumed conical helmet. So he's got to be like, woof. You know, helmet. Hell and he yeah. has I love and, a good hat. <laughs> and he has a, a heavy boar spear, like a big, big fuck off spear, um, sort of like the one that Yost is using. And um, he wears scarlet banded mail, mm. uh, almost similar to the kind that Samantha actually picked up. Um, the the sarcophagus on the southern end is made out of elaborate marble, and it has carvings of struggling warriors on all four sides of it. And on the lid is an image of a supine jockin. Oh my god! Carrying we just found another like major carrying heroes. carrying his helmet and spear. A spear and magic helmet. <laughs> no, uh, the the uh, the effigy on top of the sarcophagus of jockin. The helmet and spear are also marble. Jockin is marble. It's not like yeah. this is a preserved body or no, something. No, yeah, it's right? all, okay. yeah, it's, it's an epic. Okay. Uh, one Thought. question I have about the um, way that he is represented in all of these frescoes around. Is it uniform? Uh, in the past, like most things have been done in profile, are any of those with him facing forward? No, no, they're actually all in profile. Good question, though. Yeah, they're all in okay. profile. Just, just to point out, he was clearly throwing a spear at a UFO. 
The yes. globe of light <laughs> is a hundred percent the spaceship. hundred percent the spaceship. This guy was trying to fight off the aliens. I'm telling you. Man. Well, the, the one yes. where he's skewering a bipedal salamander uh, triggers memories in you as well. Oh, does, oh, does that look like the one of the guys in the, in the coffins? No, it's 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 the um. The, remember the the gaping maw statues of like the Salander Mander, right? Is that what you're referring to, John? I don't know. Like the statue I saw within the pyramid, which was a amphibian, though, which is what I'm trying to clarify. Versus, is a salamander an amphibian? Well, in whom it does it trigger the memories? It, it is. is. So. Okay. Okay. It, it is. Okay. So yes. Yeah. So and and, okay. and I I immediately go, oh, I've seen some. A re- hey guys, I've seen a really fucking nasty statue of one of these motherfuckers. Uh, excuse my language. Sorry, my <laughs> children. Children, I've learned now that we have young uh, uh, listeners. <laughs> um, mother kissers, mother, mother goofers. Uh, anyway, we, so, we agree so, so that I, this I, might be something that we want to check. Check. Take a look. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. We should. It is John, also hundred percent can... trapped in an awful way. Yes. All I'm going to say is the salamander, I'll, I'll convey to them what I saw within the Hidden Pyramid. I'm going to say the alien thing as well. Wasn't that, it's kind of weird, like that thing we saw. Is there anything else we see before we tamper that strikes a memory in anyone? I just want to like... Uh, not really. Kids. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, all, oh, this, all the depictions like do trigger memories of like stories that you heard as a kid, you know? Right. One more question. In the depiction of his fighting, at any point do his weapons... This is like so meta. I'm trying to think of like what a medieval interpretation of a laser rifle would look like. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's throwing lightning bolts. You know what I mean? Or something. <laughs> Maybe not. Never mind. No, uh, I'm just trying to figure out if any of these heroes are like not actually of this place, and we've mistaken them for like, you know, humans, right? right? right. And maybe they're not. I don't know. I'm speculating. Go ahead, Ted. Well, so okay. The images of a salamander, and we've you said you saw some amphibian reptile creatures inside the pyramid, and we've heard of frogs or frogmen. Does this salamander creature look frog like to someone who didn't necessarily know what a salamander was? Perhaps it's tough to tell, or, like, it's all water damaged. You can just tell that they're yeah. definitely like amphibious of some sort. If, if you could pinpoint okay. it, you would say. If you cross-reference it with the depictions of the frogs that you've seen versus what Onweir is describing of the of this very strange oily statue that he saw, yeah, that one had sort of almost like a an arrow, like a bullet shaped mouth, like yeah. maw, yeah. unlike a frog, which is more like wide, right, and flat. Yeah. Um, you would say that this more resembles what Onweir saw. I love that. Also pointing out again the tunnel right next to the spaceship is we know for certain where some of these came from because there was a mosaic basically illustrating that in that hall right some sort of fighting back of these i believe right of these oh, yeah, down by the, yeah. those, yeah. those were salamander tunnels yeah where we just came from right right yeah. per, per, before the hall of heroes yeah so there's a okay. lot of things to connect here anyway Mike, you wanted to prod at this. Let's prod at yeah. it. It's only got a couple first minutes. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> first things first, John, I want to look for telltale holes in the floor for um, those spears that we saw in the other room. Okay. You don't seem to see any. Okay. And, is the floor really... covered in dirt, though? Is there, like, dirt and... Uh, yeah, it does not appear to be well trammeled. I wouldn't say dirt, okay. but it's okay. um, but it doesn't appear that anyone's been in here in quite some time. All right. Then I want to carefully, like, while I'm still outside the room, hold on, Ted, yep. <laughs> take my dagger and scrape away some of the dirt and look for, like, anything hidden underneath it as far as, like, pressure plates or um, spear holes or anything else like that. Gotcha. Okay, that'll take a turn to be very thorough. You okay with that? Yep, I am. And okay. uh, yeah. while he's doing that, we should also be checking the walls and the ceiling for holes and you know, hey, that block looks like it could slide out and land on someone, that kind okay. of thing. So you're being and in very... fact, while they're doing that, sorry, John. Go ahead. Uh, uh, in the hallway we're in, prior to entering, I'm going to look for any buttons or levers or things that would engage or disengage a trap within the room outside mm. of it. Okay, so sense? you're very carefully, thoroughly, all of you take a turn to check for traps, basically, and you find none. Okay. okay. You have, uh, we have to close it up really quick here so what, what, one last thing that to do what what if you want to do I'm, something here take the lid off mike <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna move to the sarcophagus john 
And I want to search the sarcophagus for, remember we found the levers in the other sarcophagus room, which trigger the traps by looking underneath the the lid carefully. Mm -hmm. I want to try and find like a duplicate mechanism for this. Okay. Uh, So you do not. However, you can tell, especially with your dwarven knowledge, that the lid is perfectly well balanced and should be able to slide off with very little pressure applied. Do it, do it, do it. In the session with this. Come on, do it. All right. We're all going to die, but just do it. It'll be fun. We'll put this back down in the hall. Everyone else gets out of the room. Tie a rope yeah. around me, John. I'm going to I'm gonna use my spear to push the coffin lid off. Okay. I'll say with the rope and searching the lid that another um, turn goes by. It is now 5 p.m. And you slide the lid off onto the ground. Inside, you do not find a body. However, there appear to be relics of Jacques and the Proud. You see a full suit of scarlet banded mail, a heavy spear, heavy, uh, all shiny and polished, and a uh, huge conical helmet with a large plume, just like a, you know, massive. Wow. Yeah. Resting in the shape of like where like a body would have been, right? You know what I mean? Like the con, the, the helmets at the top, that sort of thing. The the spears at the side, um, and sitting in the center on the chest piece of the chest piece, the cuirass, I guess, of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, armor is a small thirty inch by twelve inch ivory coffer, unadorned but made out of exquisite ivory, basically like well-carved on top. But there are no, there are no bones. There is no indication of um, anything having rotted away here. It just appears to be the relics arranged very nicely. Everything is at a high sheen. It looks, looks pristine. And there is this coffer that's just sort of sitting right on top. Oh Nothing, no smell emanated, nothing untoward. I think it's they all probably cursed, like... rendered him. They probably <laughs> rendered him to ash and then put him in the coffer, right? Like maybe, maybe that's the they did Excuse for like... uh, Laryl, Yeah, I have the coin purse of ash. What if all of their ashes have some relevance? I mean, right. I mean, maybe that's the purpose of the giant flaming uh, pit, resurrecting yeah. dead heroes. No, or burning them, them down no, into you, ash. It's a... You know too that oh. you're you're very near the place where you found Laryl's artifacts. Yeah, and when you found Laryl's stuff, um, and you have proven that this stuff appears to be Laryl's actual items because of you've been using them and they've been powerful, that they were they came they they appeared to be old, old and ancient and of a you know these appeared to be bright and shiny and new. I wonder. Well, that's my concern. I wonder if this is the honeypot. I think it, it might was. be. No well, trap. Laryl's stuff was disguised and we saw through it with the true seeing oh, right, that's yeah. true. We've been drunk of yeah which we have not drunk of currently because i believe when we tried to drunk of it again something bad happened is oh not, no but... no no i forget about it it was okay. fine <laughs> so uh yeah we this i mean whether these are the items or not i i couldn't say but uh that yeah disguising things in this it seems to be par for the course with that in mind, one last thing, John, if it's okay, before we cut. Mm-hmm. Can I survey what these items look like and cross-check across all of the mosaics around mm-hmm. that they're the, the same on number and like like look of items exist? In other words, are, are there items in this that shouldn't be in here or on the mural that should? Or do they look slightly different? Nope. You get what I'm so, saying? I'm just comparing. Okay, so one, there's no, there's no, obviously, there's no jockin. There's, there's no body. Yes. Um, everything yes. else looks the same. Um, the only thing that is not depicted in the, uh, in the frescoes that is in the coffin, in the sarcophagus, is this ivory box. That's Which jockin. jockin probably. Probably. Yeah. probably his ashes. Um, okay. You know what? You know what I want to do is, uh, from like, if we can rig up something to like lip pull something out of there but not be close the way of a foolish thief would be like well, with, well, you know, with, with some rope, with a, with a hook, you know, some, some way to like pull it out without being right there to. I, I really wish line. That we had some way to detect curses or see if they're even magical or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like end tomorrow. <laughs> well, detecting magic might just turn up the fact that there's magic disguising them. 
Right. Right. Yep. Guys, I know we said no to camping, but something to consider. We could sleep in a knowing that there's not really been any traffic in here, sleep the night and where we think it's safe. I could get read magic memorized. Avricios could get detections memorized, and we could just do it before going up. It's just a thought. We don't have to. But knowing that it's real, we'll still get some random rolls, I'm sure. But knowing that this is a relatively insulated space, I think it's less risky than another area of the dungeon. Sure. Yeah. I'm not opposed okay. to it. So it looks like I you would guys like got to right. fill in some of the other corridors before we decide to do that, David. Yeah, it's early, sure. didn't they? So you have to you have to give the what you're going to deal with the what, what you're going to do with these relics a little bit more thought, which you can do next time, I suppose. So this is a good place to pick it up from next time. So I think that'll do it for the night. Really cool stuff. You went in a completely different direction than I expected. So uh, as, it, time, yeah. as, as, as things go. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll leave it. <clears throat> we'll leave it at that. So you have been watching 3D6 down the line. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notifications. Don't forget to spread the word. We are the most criminally underwatched actual play series on YouTube. Please give us some more love. It'd be awesome. And until next time, have a great week, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thank you, John. That was really fun.